What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Harsh Language Podcast. Dan, Dusty, and Marvin, and my shaky mic. Back with you once Ahoy. again. Yes, yes. Fuck back for it. another one. What is going on What's with going this on? thing? I don't know. Shaky my mic, boots. My shit's fucking wobbling. I don't know. Ain't that the good one? The good arm? Yeah, no, it's a good arm. It's just... It's years of abuse from pounding on your desk. No, it's just... <laughs> you gotta find the sweet spot, like, on the thing, the knobs... And then you're good. But then it's like, it doesn't move as freely and it makes noise and shit. Uh, whatever. Ah, how we doing, folks? How's everybody doing? Set it. Doing great. It. I'm got not the a... window open. Got the breeze. Yeah. Nice. Got the fan going. I don't know. I think I'm like going through, uh, is there like a male version of uh, menopause? Probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm going through that. I just got like hot yeah, midlife or crisis where you buy a, like a Miata, you know, a <laughs> yeah, or a motorcycle. I'm never going yeah. through a midlife crisis. I'm calling it now. That's you not say, gonna happen to me. You say that, but my uh, my history and economics teacher in high school had a Miata, and he was like the football coach and shit. It was so funny. <laughs> he looked like Mister Incredible getting into his fucking car. <laughs> it yeah. was fucking ridiculous. So that's a true thing, folks. Yeah, it is. I'm too cheap for that though. Yeah, just save my money. And just to address what you said, Dusty, truck. I'm not a set it and forget it guy. You should know that by now. I am. I'm the opposite. I'm set it and fuck with it a hundred million yeah. times. No, Marvin, Dan's you're the OG tinker. tinker. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. <laughs> I told you I evolved from that. I'm, nah. I'm beyond that. <laughs> beyond. It's like it's like ego death. I, I no longer tinker. Yeah, you've. I'm completely content. You've ascended. Yep. That's good. Teach me. Teach me how to do that. You got to go through some things. You got to tinker until you can realize that, oh, it's never going to sound as good as I wanted it to sound. And then you just right. give it up. So this is weird. We missed last week's episode. You got all fucking out of sorts this week. I got confused. Yeah. 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 How was uh, how was everybody's week? Two weeks. Oh, man. What happened? I caught up on a lot of stuff. Yeah, you've been putting mm -hmm. in work, Marvin. Putting in that fucking hours. What'd so. you do? You finished Luther? I finished Luther. I caught up with Mayor of Kingstown. Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. Um, what else? Then you started, it uh, wasn't Yellow Jackets, it was something else. No, he Ted started, Lasso. Oh, you ended up starting Ted Lasso, yeah, Ted Lasso. not Yellow yeah. Jackets? Yeah, I actually didn't finish the entire episode, though. Mm. Um, so I gotta, I gotta get. Yeah. Uh, I didn't finish it. Ted Lasso's easy. You'll be able to fucking bang that those two seasons out in no time. Half hour yeah, episodes. Yeah, I should be able to. And yeah. the show is so good that it's like, it's pretty addicting. Oh, that show's great. Yeah. Can't wait for season three. Did you guys should catch coming out pretty the soon. latest episode of Kingstown? No, I haven't watched anything yet. Ooh. I have. I haven't watched that, and I haven't watched The Last of Us. So I got to do that tonight after we record. If I could stay awake. Okay. I fell asleep last night at like 9.30 and then woke <laughs> up at 5 a.m. Yep. I will say, though, I was pretty fucking productive this morning. That was kind of nice. Yeah. But fuck that. I can't be waking up that early all the time. <laughs> Not for me. Yeah. Yeah. We tried to fix our sleep schedules. Mine was ruined. I think I went to bed at like noon or one after being yeah. up like 20 hours. And I woke up like three hours later to go to the bathroom. Then I couldn't go to sleep for like six hours. And then I would yeah. fall asleep for 15 minutes and wake up and I'd fall asleep. Yeah. It was terrible. And but I was I think I'm finally fixed. Yeah. I was going to take a nap earlier today. And then I kind of just like ran out of time to do it. <laughs> and uh, I was like falling asleep at the, the movie movies. theater today. I was falling asleep at the theater. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell the people what you went to see. Oh, uh, no, we'll get into that in a minute. What have you been watching, Dusty? You you were watching that? You finished that show, uh, Poker Face, right? You said you got got over it. Yeah, I caught up to it. Yeah, it's uh, it feels like it's starting to get repetitive. You know, like uh, mm. it's it doesn't really have anything to do with poker anymore. It's like a, it, it's not even a who done it. Like it's a murder, and she figures out like, 
you already know that she knows how to figure out the bullshit of who's lying and who doesn't lie. So you see the ver- the murder at the very beginning of every episode. And then like the episode is her going through the motions of figuring it out herself, which is interesting, but it's not interesting for like nine episodes in a row. Like it's getting a little bit repetitive and tiring. So mm. I don't know, maybe it'll finish strong, but I'm starting to lose interest. It, but well, it, I mean, it's the acting is pretty decent. Some good casts. I mean, Natasha Leone is fucking great. She has a show yeah. on uh, Netflix called Russian Doll that's really good. I think she wrote mm-hmm. it. I heard um, of that one. Yeah, that show's good, which I have to catch up on. It's second season's out. Um, mm. That's a show where she was in like a death loop on her birthday. She keeps dying over and over. Like oh. she dies and wakes up in the same spot and then dies again. And it's like. That's what the Russian Doll show is about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kind of like a Groundhog Day, except you're dying every time. Yeah, basically. That reminds me of that movie. There was some movie that came out. It was like a horror movie or something. It was kind of the same thing where the girl, she keeps dying on campus and she's got to figure out. Oh, that was... um. What was that? That's uh the chick from Catherine Newton. She's in that, I think. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. I only watched it once, and it was a Wait. long time ago. Oh, no, it's not Catherine Newton. I can't think of it. That's, um... Oh! Yeah, there's two of them, and they're good movies. I can't think of the name, but they're good. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it Happy Death Day? I think it is. Yep, yep. There you go. You got it. Or something like that. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Yeah, no, those were good. And I only, I only actually watched those recently, too. Oh, nice. Not like... Uh, yeah, I don't, I watched them, I don't know, maybe last year, like last summer. I don't uh, know if I watched the second one. I didn't know there were two. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, I like those movies. They're pretty, pretty fun and creative. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's good. When you were talking about it, about the show to me the other night, Dusty, I said, have you ever watched Monk? And we kind of talked about it for a minute, but Monk really? is one of my favorite shows ever. Probably my top five. And it sounds similar to Monk a little bit, because Monk was kind of like that. Like, Monk, you see the murder take place in a lot of the episodes, and it's about him solving them, but it's interesting enough because of him and the way he solves them and, like, the barriers he has to, like, his own internal struggles with anxiety and, like, OCD and all that shit. Yeah. That he has to, that, like, how he gets to solving cases, but it's because of his disabilities Oh, not disabilities, because of those issues that he deals with. That's why he's such a good detective. Because of his crippling OCD, he'll be able to spot like a clue that nobody else can, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so it's similar, very creative. Yeah. But I've uh, never this watched. It's more of um, it, it. It's because you know that her superpower is she yeah. can tell when you're you know, calling bullshit, Mm -hmm. she's going to figure it out Mm -hmm. regardless. So it's really just her interaction with the other characters. Like there's some like that are pretty good. Like she, she's cause she's on the run now from the first episode. So she's working like shit in jobs. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. she's a, she's a roadie and like one, she's working at at an old person home. And there's a couple of ladies that used to be like eco terrorists when they were young. And they figured out like the guy that they thought they were in love with that got arrested was actually like the informant. And so like they kill him and she's, you know, the interaction between her and like the, the characters is yeah. fun and fascinating, but I don't know, it's, well, it's that's what, mundane. That's why it made mm-hmm. me think about it when you said it's mundane is because like Monk never gets old, but it's always the same formula pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like Luther, right? Yeah. Similar. Well, Luther's like way more drama centered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like thriller at some points. There's some episodes of Luther that are kind of like creepy too. Oh, yeah. Like with the serial killers and stuff. Uh, but Monk is like, it's fu- It's a funny show. It's just that like, the reason it got me thinking about it is because you see sort of the crime take place. Like that's how every episode starts. Uh, but yeah, there's some, there's some yeah, cool, well, big crime moments I in give Monk, it a shot. Marvin. Nah, yeah, I probably might won't. Might be up your alley. I probably won't it's check NBC, it It's NBC. It's Peacock. So, yeah, you know. I don't care about it, really. I thought about it <laughs> when you first mentioned Dan it, feels. and then I was just kind of like, nah, don't care. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's way too many good shows to get caught watching something, like like you said, Dusty, where it's like yeah. yeah. kind of mundane. It's like, I we, could watch some fire shit right now. Mm-hmm. We talked about <laughs> this with this. Owen. I don't have, like, I just don't have it in me to watch stuff that's just kind of like, eh. 
You know what I mean? Well, I mean, they draw you in in the first episode. It's a banger. Mm. Like, I'm sure they do. That's the point of the and, first episode. And, yeah. Right. They better draw you in in the pilot, otherwise. That shit don't work on me. If no? it gets shitty, I'm I'm dropping it. It's done. Yeah, see, that's the other thing, too. I'm a completionist. So, like, even if oh, I yeah, don't like me. something, I'll stick it out. <laughs> what was that show a couple months back that we talked about uh, that I said I was, like, super disappointed about? The one that was, like, about the family that moved into the house and they were getting the letters? The, the, oh. I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, that was the show. Like I fucking hated it. It was so bad, and I just kept watching yeah. it because I was like, "Fucking, <laughs> I'm in now." Yeah. I'll let it go. I'll let a show go if it's bad. I, I will I too. Care. So yeah, Last of Us was good. No spoilers, but good. I thought it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. Big fan. I think we're getting you, to the you know, point. You know how this episode goes, though. You should because you play the game. Like. Yeah, I'm fairly there, confident where it's headed. I. Uh, they're up in Wyoming at the. Uh, the, right. the dam the power plant mm-hmm. but uh yeah no we're getting to the point where i'll be either the next podcast episode or the one after that i'll be giving my thoughts on whether or not this show is doing its job um, what did ed say did he like it yeah he liked it the show's been great so far it's been really good i've i've loved it it's just not not quite the game even even as good <laughs> as it is yeah i talked about this yeah, with my... I mean, again it's as close as it's the closest one to one as I think we've ever seen from video game to sh- to film. But it's well, I mean, still... I said this before. I don't want a one to one. Really, at the end of the day, you don't. It takes want that. its own liberties, right? Yeah. And liberties are great. It's just again back to the thing that I was concerned about from the get go. Like, I had that that bond isn't really there for me between the two characters yet, um, mm. and it might get there still. Uh, I would hope it does, but I just don't think it's going to be as good as the game. It can't be because I I told one of my, I was talking to one of my friends about this this week is that like, and I think I probably said it here too. A video game, I think is just the, it's just the best medium in which to tell a story. Uh, because you know, when you're reading a book, you're imagining like the shit, like it's in your head and what you imagine is completely different from what the writer was probably imagining in most cases. I'm sure in very rare cases, the writer's so good at doing what they're doing that, like, the reader has, like, a pretty accurate vision of what the writer wanted. And in a movie, obviously, you're just, be- or a TV show, you're just being shown what the director and writers want you to see. But in a video game, it's like a whole added depth and layer of it because you are the character. You're not just witnessing yep. the character. You're experiencing the things that they're experiencing. So in the game, when Joel gets close to Ellie, you get close to Ellie. And you form the bond with the character that's absent from the series just because it's a show. So it's not the show's fault. It's just the medium that they're telling it on. So for that reason alone, I think by the end of it, I'll probably just be like, yeah, yeah, no, it was good, but it's still not the game. Um, yeah. It's a time investment. Cause well, with the show now or <clears throat> with this episode where like you're five or six hours into these characters being together. Yeah. Whereas this part of the game, you're twice that at minimum. Well, they're also rushing. Because you've been, right. been playing. Yeah, they skip stuff. They rush some stuff. And a rush so. is probably the wrong word. It's just there's not a lot of that game filler where you're, like, fighting fucking infected yep. and yeah. cut scenes. Like, it's, it's very... The plot is very, like... It's moving mm-hmm. very quickly. So uh, that's another big part of it, too. You know, with that, like, connection between the characters is there's a lot, like, most of the moments in the game is just dialogue between the two of them while you're just walking around looting and shit. Right. So that can't be replicated in the show. So. Yeah, not enough time. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just not a thing that they could do really. Like, yeah, obviously there's scenes between them, but. Right. um, But yeah, no, I'm, I I still, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, and that's really all I've been watching. That Mayor of Kingstown and uh, Mayor of Kingstown this season's a banger. Oh yeah, I finally sat down and watched Plane because last time we did the podcast, I almost talking about it because we're talking about Gerard Butler, and uh, it was all right. I mean, it felt like a Hollywoodized version of like Sully, where you know it's plane, you got to go down, you got to land. And, you don't think Sully was the, the Hollywoodized version mm-hmm. of Sully? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, but that's like him? a got to got to land a plane and then it's over. Where this is like got to land a plane. All right. Holy shit, there's terrorists everywhere. Now we got to fight our way out. Yeah, it's more Hollywood eyes. For sure won't <laughs> be watching that movie. <laughs> I saw the tra- saw the trailer tonight for uh The Fast and Furious. Like are we just done with these movies yet? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I've been done. I think Most this is like are. the last one, but I haven't seen one since like Fast and Furious 2, I think. I don't even think I've seen Tokyo Drift. I might have seen it on TV at some oh, point. Oh, you gotta That's see Tokyo one. Drift at least. Yep. But like, at least. They just fully embrace the memes now. Like, fucking, he- the cars are turning into hell. Like, they're basically Transformers, and this dude just says family every other fucking sentence. <laughs> yep. I won't, you Better. won't get my family. It's like, dude, please, <laughs> dude. So it talks about family in that series, and then the other series is in all he has to say is, I am Groot. Mm-hmm. And people love that movie, too. I don't, I don't understand. Apparently, he's like a huge nerd, like sure he is. nerd or something. You're talking about Vin Diesel, right? Yeah. 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 Apparently, he's like well, a he's, huge like game master for D&D and shit. He's heavily involved in the new Ark game. Like, I think he's doing some voiceover acting for that. So. He's the main character. They like took yeah. his likeness too, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as I know. Uh, but I'll tell you yeah, what he's I he's been playing since the eighties, apparently. Really? That's yeah. crazy. So he's so like he's, a huge he's, like D and D fan. Cavill type numbers. Then. He's one of the yeah. nerds from fucking Stranger Things. <laughs> They're fucking playing in his friend's basement in the eighties. <laughs> Cause he well, you know, he was he had the Riddick thing too, and he was like a big fan of those movies are great. That so that's why he was mm-hmm. Probably so good in it because he was a huge fan of it. Have you seen those movies, Marvin? Yeah. They're good. That's been a long time, though. That's good sci fi right there. I couldn't tell you the plot or anything <laughs> so about those. It's been yeah. a little, very long time. That was very good. Um, so The game was pretty good, though. I remember that. Never played it. I didn't play the game either. I think it was like PS2, though, no, maybe PS1. <laughs> no, I don't think it was PS1. I feel like it was on 360. No, it was Xbox. It was Xbox. Regular Xbox. Oh, really? I thought it was 360. Yeah. 2004. Mm. Woo. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of watching things, I just got back minutes ago, moments ago, uh, to, from seeing Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Yeah. I think we'll I talk about it this morning. You went to see it this morning? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Matinee. So nice. I, I always go to matinees. It's a 10, 11 a.m. That's the best time to go see a movie. Figure we could talk about it a little bit. Uh, do a little bit of a, I don't know, little off the cuff review. Nothing crazy. No spoilers. I'm not going to spoil anything because if people are watching the podcast not to hear about Ant Man, I don't want to fuck anybody over. And of course, Marvin hasn't seen it yet. But yep. uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I think we have enough of a trend now to where I could confidently say that Marvel has lost the magic. Ooh. Yeah. I think what they happened? I think they have cooked the golden goose. Uh uh. I so don't, they were just carried by like the main I don't, the big the bangers. Or? I don't I don't think that's the case. We've we've certainly like debated it here. Well, not debated yeah. it, but we've 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 talked about we've talked it here. About it. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. And I don't think it's a lack of effort either, like a lot of people are saying. Kevin Feige doesn't strike. He, I mean, I don't know the guy, but anytime you hear him talk, he seems very passionate about the characters and these stories that he's telling. And and that's clear because, you know, you wouldn't get this far in this type of massive franchise without a level of care to it. Uh, I think it's just, you know, I think I think they have, gone with I think they maybe got a little too comfortable and maybe not even by his own doing it probably has nothing to do with him it's probably studio shit and it's just quantity over quality at this point like Mm -hmm. there's just so much stuff that they're doing and it's just it's got to be impossible to quality control everything and this movie was this movie was like this is one of the worst Marvel movies I think I've seen like ever what um, really we came away with different takes then yeah did not like it at all it, it felt like it was written by a fifth grader uh there was <laughs> n- there was like no character development there was no barely any character the movie is it's supposed to be scott lang's character and he was barely even like a fucking thing Close. in it he was just wow. there Damn. um <laughs> and, and really we well we, we'll get I mean, what did we, you say dustin Agree to disagree. I mean, oh, okay. it was about it was more about his daughter and him just trying to protect her the entire movie. But that's not a character arc. That's just that's just <laughs> doing things like this movie I, was. I mean, that's Scott Lane throughout Ant Man through all the movies. I, I get it, but in each movie he has a character arc. 
in the first one, he's a flawed hero who, like, is trying to do things to... In, in, in service of his daughter. The first one's great. Yeah, the, the first one's one, great. The second one's not good think, either. I actually think that this one's better than the second one. No, I, I mean, up until this point, it was like Thor The Dark World, Ant-Man 2, uh, Eternals, maybe. And, like, I can't even think of a couple of others that were, like, rare misses for Marvel. Uh, this one is by far, I think, the one that I have not enjoyed But I'm also most. a Kang, Kang fan, so uh, I enjoyed the I Kang. Can't, Kang story. wasn't even really good in it either, and it's basically his movie. Um, that And that, that's really what took me by surprise. Uh, like, he's... This movie, right. this movie, this movie, Modoc was a letdown for me. Like, I thought Modoc that was cheese. What they did written by a one. child. Like everything is a like they sacrifice story and character for jokes now. At at this point in every mm -hmm. movie, like Modoc is a cool villain. He was literally comic relief in this movie, yeah. and there were some but, moments, some things I mean, he said were funny, and I laughed. Yeah, but like they were just cheesy fucking throwaway lines that it's like. You know, that one thing he said at the end there. I mean, this will be the only spoiler I say. Yeah. He's, he's like, at least I died in Avengers. I'm just like, what? <laughs> okay. It's kind of funny, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, the uh, Modoc, like, he's not like a main villain. So it feels like, like, um, Marvel sometimes, or at least Feige in the MCU, they'll take liberties with these type of villains to put them in one movie and then kill them off and write them off because. It's fan service to just have them in there. And that's what it felt like. That's why I was kind of a little upset with Mo. Mm, I actually yeah. feel like if I had to if I had to guess, again, this is just purely speculative. I have no clue what goes on in, in in this business, but I bet you with the how big this shit is now, I bet you Feige has less of a creative input on a lot of these projects than he used to have. And that's where the difference is coming into play because it would make sense if he's all these projects and he's got to like oversee certain things and like who's right and what hiring directors, hiring actors for a time, uh, maybe securing fucking like deals for fucking characters and shit like that. Like he's probably got a lot on his plate where he can't really just sit down and be like, okay, well this is like, this is what I want to see. And like, I don't know this, this movie just served it. This was just a vehicle to introduce Kang really. And, and and just the whole thing fell flat. Like, I I, I really well, don't you also even... got a lot of you also got a lot of Janet's backstory because you didn't really get that in the second one. Maybe you didn't care to. Yeah, but don't care. Like, what? Who cares? Like, she was in the quantum realm. Okay, we get it. But like, even what they right. showed with her it was just like it. It just wasn't. It was all shown through like these weird flashbacks and like. It was most of the dialogue is really what took me out. The dialogue in this movie was fucking terrible. And like scenes where it's like these one line back at these like one word back and forth. It's like, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. And it's like, well, <laughs> who fucking wrote this? And then I looked it up. And it's like, oh, I know who wrote it. Jeff Loveness, the guy who fucking co-wrote Rick and Morty, which is a show that I fucking hate. Uh, yeah. So now I get it. Fucking wrote a cartoon. And the movie literally feels like a cartoon. <laughs> And that brings me to the other part of it that I fucking couldn't stand. I get it that it's Marvel and it's spectacle, but they have now they yeah. they have now become the thing that everybody wrongly criticized them for being all these years, which is just uh, pure spectacle, cotton candy films without any type of emotion or character mm. arcs or story or any of that they're, stuff. They're coming, but they're becoming what Seth Rogen <laughs> said they were like, yeah. a couple weeks ago. Um, now, how much do you think that is actually Kevin Feige or because mm. when the MCU started, it was, uh, it was Bob Iger and then he stepped down and Bob Chapik came in and that's when they really started like pumping out a lot of shit. Mm. And he, it could have been like Chapik saying more, more, more Possible. money, money, money. Because uh, we, as I reported in the news before, once Iger came back in, they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna slow this down a little. Well, bit. I mean, it's Let's possible, but I mean, pumping it out too much. The thing is, is that they're not gonna see a box office hit. I don't think. I mean, they might. I don't know how well this movie's doing. You could maybe look that up, but I mean, it's a Marvel movie, so they'll, it's yeah. I don't know. Opening week. They'll probably have a pretty crazy opening because yeah. it's a Marvel movie. So it's like, they're not going to really, but I mean, executives don't even really seem to care 
because you saw with WB, like, they were putting out fucking complete dog shit and still turning a profit because it's like, oh, it's Superman and Batman in a movie together. Fucking everybody's <laughs> going to go see that. Yeah. I, I don't know. If that, I guess that could be the case. I could certainly see an executive being like, hey, give us all the things. But, you know, yeah. and it's a, it's a really stark contrast because not too long ago, the MCU, it was just like, if you look at the time between like 2014 and 20, like 18, 2019, with starting with like Winter Soldier to Infinity War, it was just, which was just movies. It was right. just movies. And, it was banger but they were also after good. banger after yeah. banger like, after banger. It, if you said pick your favorite movie from this phase, you'd have like, a hard you'd time. You'd have to be like, you'd have a hard time. And now it's easily like, which we still disagree because I think Doctor Strange was the best movie of the last phase. I thought I Doctor Strange was thought. terrible. Yeah, <laughs> see, so terrible. The only good movie to come out of this phase was Spider Man, so far. Mm. But this is phase five now. So this is another problem. This is the beginning. This is, this is this the is first. This is not a good beginning. No. And, and you know, like, so again, from 2014 to 2019, it was just banger after banger after banger after banger. Now yeah. you go into a Marvel project, even the shows, and you're like, you're like lucky if you come out of it being like, yeah, no, it was all right. Like it was whatever. Yeah. It was okay. And that's yeah. just how the reaction has been. It's just lukewarm for every single one of these. And if you look at it, they're all the same it's all the same reason behind it. They're just these convoluted, like, oversaturated vehicles for the next thing. And they never were that. Like, the MCU started off so great and so strong because they were telling independent, great stories that... They also had the most lovable characters that they could pull Forget from the characters, because I don't think that has anything to do uh, with it's it. A big, uh, it's a huge I don't agree huge. with you. I don't agree with you. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Because while, yes, Captain America is obviously more of a fan favorite than fucking, I don't know. Uh, Ant-Man. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> like, even, you know, Ms. Marvel or somebody like like mm. Or She-Hulk. Like... Mm. Uh, for sure. But that doesn't mean you can't make a good story with a nobody character. James Gunn Agreed. did it. James Gunn has done right. it mil several times now, in fact, on in both uh, companies. So, like, it could be done. Ant-Man is the same thing. Like, he was a, he was a no- Ant-Man? Fucking what? We're getting an <laughs> Ant-Man movie? Oh, shit, this yeah. is great. Now I like Ant-Man. He's an original Avenger, so comic book uh, fans knew he No, was. I understand, but he's a fucking Avenger from, like, the 30s. Like, pe modern audiences don't know who the fuck <laughs> Ant-Man is. And if they <laughs> hear Ant-Man, the they're gonna have a Marvin reaction, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Who the fuck is Ant-Man? So, the point being is, it doesn't matter who the character is. You could, like, yeah, for sure, Tony Stark is more popular than Ant-Man, but you could still make a good story with a no- a no-name character, provided you have just effort in the writing, and this movie just completely lacks effort, in my opinion, and they all have. Even fucking Black Panther being, like, a pretty good, I mean, it was a good movie, but even still, you walk out of that one, you're like, yeah, it was alright. Like, it wasn't yeah. that great. You know, like, that movie was carried by, like, the emotion behind it with Chadwick. Right. And, you know, that continues to be the case. With all these movies, there's just convoluted vehicles for the next thing. And what I started to say was, like, back in the day, when it was just banger after banger, they were all independent stories. Like, very good, like, here's Captain America the Winter Soldier. And it's, it's a very much a Captain America story. We know it's set in the overall MCU. We know we're gonna hear, like, oh, we're hearing about fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA and all this stuff, and right. it's interconnected. But yep. it didn't it's its sole purpose wasn't to lead you to the next thing. That's why the fucking after I mean, it credit, was, but it didn't feel that way, right? No, like, it wasn't though. It was not. But the, it did by the it was an uh, introduction. by the time they did the third one is the difference. Like, but the yeah, first... ha, you have to let me finish because it, yeah. I, I have a very specific point I'm trying to make. Yes, mm -hmm. they're connected. Yes, they're saying, hey, the next thing is going to be this. That's why the fucking post credit scenes got so popular and became a thing because it's like, hey, here's a little mm -hmm. tease for what's coming. But mm -hmm. it wasn't the sole purpose of the movie. The sole right. purpose of Ant-Man was to be like, hey, Kang's here, he's coming back. The sole <laughs> purpose of fucking Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was like, hey, here's America Chavez that nobody gives a fuck about. She's coming back. <laughs> the sole purpose of fucking, uh, what was the fucking, I don't even, I don't even remember these movies now at this point. Uh, Black right. Panther was to be like, hey, 
Here's Namor now, and like, well, nah, that's oh, yeah. that's unfair to say because that movie that that movie's sole purpose was to honor Chadwick, but but most of these projects now, their sole purpose is to introduce the next thing, and and then everything involved in it is just it's flat because there's some truth to that with Absolutely. this with this movie, like every I didn't give a fuck about any of the characters, I didn't give a shit about what was happening, you none didn't like of the it, guy who wanted holes, yeah, like. I, I I honestly, dude, at one point I turned to my friend, I was like, dude, did you buy Star Wars tickets by accident? This was like, <laughs> so, this was such a Star Wars movie, so much so that there were fucking Tusken Raiders in this, like literal Tusken Raiders. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't go to the Moss Eisley, uh, the Moss Eisley Cantina at one point. <laughs> and like, talking about like lazy writing, Marvin, they're in the quantum yeah. realm. And there's these little creatures and things that clearly don't speak English. So naturally, you need a MacGuffin to be like, hey, we need to speak English so we can hear these characters say funny throwaway lines. Uh -huh. And it's just like, here's some random... You drink this guy's juice. Drink some juice, and now all of a sudden you could understand what everybody's saying and <laughs> communicate with them. And it's just such a fucking, like, lazy... Yeah. Silly thing, but lazy. And laziness, I think, is the sum of this whole movie. And it was all pure spectacle, cotton candy movie. Marvin, when I tell you there is like five minutes of non-CGI in this movie, I'm not exaggerating. This wow. entire That's movie, true. the entire... And I'm, I love when CGI... I've talked about this a million times. When CGI is done good, it's great and believable. Yeah, right. it's, it's a blend of practical and CGI. This movie was 100% shot on a green screen. Like... Well, and we've talked about that before too, like yeah. how Marvel does their CGI and they've already got it all mapped out and they don't give directors freedom to direct because they say, you're just directing this much of it. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. everything else taken care of, the fight scenes, mm -hmm. all these scenes. So it's already mapped out. It's already written. We got it. You don't worry about it. And so yeah. there's not as much freedom as there, I think there used to be. But And the CGI in this movie is not good in a lot of, in a lot of the time. It's not that great. Uh, and... So, you know, briefly talking about Kang being that this is basically his movie. Jonathan Majors is like the only good part of this movie. He was the only one doing anything worth a damn. God yeah. bless him. He 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 did what he could with what he was given. But even his dialogue is one where he's like, I am Kang. It's like, dude, what? Like, again, did a child write this? <laughs> it felt like watching a child play with their toys and they say like fucking dumb shit at their kids because their <laughs> brains can't like create anything. And this is what this felt like. And it's just, I, I don't know, yeah. I was very disappointed. To be fair, that is exactly something that you would see in a comic still if you're reading the books. I get it, but I'm not reading a comic book. I'm watching a movie. I want to <laughs> I want to see movie dialogue that's good. Like, and it, because they've done it before. This this actually felt like a DC movie. This felt like one like one of these like just shitty Zack Snyder movies where that's trying to be the MCU <laughs> but failing miserably at it. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, you have characters, like I said, that, you know, for it being his movie, Scott Lang is like barely a character in this movie. Uh, Michael Douglas is completely underutilized. He just shows up with an army of ants again, as usual. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, like aside from her little flashback, she spent the whole movie like not telling her family of scientists about something she's afraid about until like the second act of the movie for no reason, where it was made no sense. Evangeline Lilly is like barely utilized in the movie. And Jonathan Majors is like the only standout person doing what he could with what he was given and yeah. even that kind of fell flat because by the end of this movie i have i left this movie with like no fear whatsoever of kang he did not wow. come across to me as like a major threat he did not i mean he did not i know they're going to pose him as that but they didn't present him that way in this he did not come across to me as like scary or threatening or any of those things. That briefly, right. there's one fight scene between the two where he's fucking like just beating the shit out of him. And there's some reason for that, though. I, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know. For the most part, I just he'll uh, be a lot scarier once he's uh, he's out of the I hate realm. I hate to do the comparison, but we have to because we're post Thanos. But like, he's no fucking Thanos. <laughs> Like you, like Thanos over the course of those years where you're just like, they're teasing him and then he just doesn't, you don't hear anything from him, but you know, he's lurking in the background and then like, boom, he shows up in a stinger. Oh, I'll do it myself. It's like, oh fuck. Like he, and, and in infinity war, the way they open infinity war where it's fucking him just like wiping out the fucking Asgardians. You're like, oh fuck, this yeah. dude does not play. 
I didn't get that impression from Kang. It's just like, uh, all right. He's and, just, he's, and Kang is supposed to be the next. Yeah, his name is Kang the guy. Conqueror. He fucking goes <laughs> right. around the multiverse killing and conquering and pillaging. And like, you just don't well, feel that from him. The ability to move through time is a superpower, and he couldn't do that in the quantum realm, which is why he was like shackled yes. a little bit no, in no, this movie. I, no, I get so it. So once he gets out, like, he'll be a lot more like. I get He's going to do some shit and be some shit that he wasn't in this movie. But for but for his but for for his introduction, I don't even th- they didn't even really like give you a good explanation of where like who he is, what he stands for, why he's doing the things he's doing. And I, I mean, they really I, didn't in the comics either. I'm sure though. that'll like, come. They're just now like just now like I think last year they finally started like fixing Kang's history because he shows up in a villain all the time in the comics for like the last 50, 60 yeah, years. Yeah, he's been retconned several they times. They never really, they never really like, you know, delved out his character and now they're actually doing it. So Yeah, well, I don't know. Which that's, is a good read, by the way. That's my thoughts on it. Not a fan. You seem to disagree with me. Give, talk talk a little bit about uh, why no, you disagree. I, I mean, I, I uh, again, I, I went in for it for Kang. Um, and like I said, you know, you're talking about how uh, these are all tied together, but like Ant-Man 1 was about Ant-Man and it really wasn't tied to anything else. Uh, Ant-Man 3 is really about um, his character within the MCU, like most of the other movies that got trilogies, which is very few when you think about it. Not a whole lot of characters got three movies. Uh, Thor got one, Cap got one, uh, mm-hmm. Iron Man got one. And even those like Iron Man 3, not a good movie. I, I like mm-hmm. Iron Man 3. I think Iron Man 3 is good. But I know I'm one of the few. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I went into it uh, thinking, uh, excited about watching Kang, and I came away with some some highs and lows, but, you know, I'm, I don't know. Marvin, did you see any of the other Ant-Man much. movies? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. It's just looking at it holistically, like... Between the movies that have come out, again, with a f- few exceptions, like Spider-Man for sure, amazing movie. Like, I'll put Black Panther in there as an exception because it was mostly good, but still not great. Like, between the movies and the TV shows, it's like, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, like Moon Knight was fucking terrible. We all agreed on yeah. that. Like, She-Hulk was, was like, right. She-Hulk was like barely memorable. Like, yeah, that was terrible. swing and a miss. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I just don't know what, like, it's just, I, I really just think it's a, it's an issue of just too much content. It's like, mm-hmm. it has to be. You can't, con, you can't quality control all that stuff. So it's like, where is this incentive coming from? Probably the executives of like, hey, we need subscribers on Di- Disney. Plus, I think Disney, yeah. I think the Disney Plus thing, th- that's another thing with this movie too. I won't spoil it. Well, I guess I kind of have to to say what I'm going to say. One of the post credit scenes is... A lead up to Loki season two, mm-hmm. but this whole movie, for the most part, if you didn't watch Loki, you're fucking well, lost. Loki <laughs> season one was yeah, it was a lead up to this. I know that's what I'm saying. So this new like thing that they're doing, where it's like y- you have to watch some shit to be to, to not be confused. There's you don't know what's going on in this movie. Same as like Doctor Strange. If you didn't watch Wandavision, you don't know what the fuck is going on in Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. You're just like, what? Yeah. Wanda's bad now. Like, Which, what the fuck? I mean, they were a lot better than that uh, in the first three phases, um, like with Agents of Shield, because like, uh, was it uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron? That was the only one where at the very beginning of the movie. They they're already assembled and they're fighting and you really don't know why unless you watch Agents of Shield but you don't really need to because it doesn't necessarily need to yeah be because you watch the first drive Avengers the movie and you're just like oh they're right. the Avengers now so clearly they're doing stuff right? right they're going after Hydra trying to like find the extra right. Hydra cells and all that stuff yeah so you don't really need that stuff and also I know you die on this hill but Agents of Shield was like not connected to the MCU the way that the Disney Plus shows are. The Disney Plus shows are like essential viewing if you want to enjoy the next thing that's coming. Oh, I out. agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I was saying it's like yeah, yeah. Agents of Shield had its own story, but it did tie in right. to the movies as they were coming out. Yeah, but it mm-hmm. wasn't necessary. Where, like right. you're saying, like Loki is mm-hmm. almost necessary. Yeah. to have somewhat of an idea of what's going on. Yeah, terrible design choice or whatever. It, you it's call just it. yeah, it's a weird business decision. It's like why yeah. are you got you're you're, you're 
you're shackling, you're literally putting handcuffs on your fan base because, like, even... Well, this is a problem of having this many characters because even in comics, like, unless you're reading every comic book that Marvel puts out, you're not really going to be, like, even when they, like, when they release Civil War or Age of Apocalypse, um, you couldn't read, I, mean, I mean, you could buy every Captain America, every Spider-Man, every Iron Man, and all the Civil War comics and know what's going on, but you could, you, I mean, well, you can't know what's going on unless you're reading them. So, but the way it goes, the way in comic books it works usually is like a reader is a fan of like a particular character, and that's the character mm -hmm. that they devote their time to. So, say I'm a right. Captain America fan, like I'm buying the Captain America books and I'm following that Captain America story. And sure, when other characters show up or the Avengers well, show up, well, there'll be pages the that'll thing. say like, right. it'll say, "Go read this for more information about this." But you don't have to. Yeah. But you don't have to. And exactly. then when they do their big yearly crossover event, it doesn't like you no. don't have to know all the other stuff because you know, like, oh, fucking, here's the X Men. With this, it's like again, it's essential viewing. It's like if I didn't, if you didn't, straight up, if you didn't watch Loki. You're fucking confused. You don't know what's going on in this movie. You're like sacred timeline. Like what the fuck is like? It's like what is going on right now? And it's gonna. It seems like it's gonna continue to be that way. And it's like, sure, there were a couple of like exceptions. I like, like the greater Marvel universe. That's why I kind of enjoy. No, I do too. But but you're but you're making a product. Like, it. Not everybody could watch every single show and movie to be caught up. No. Agreed. And 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 then what are you supposed to do with somebody like Marvin, for instance, who hasn't watched everything? Hey, Marvin, you should really sit down and watch the MCU stuff. He's gonna sit down. It's like thirty three movies and like fifteen shows. Holy fuck! <laughs> we like, were what having the this conversation because my roommate has not watched them at all, and oh my I God. was like, he was like, "What do I got to do to get caught up?" And yeah. so like I sat down and watched like just the take Captain off of America's work for a year, just the Avengers, and I was like, "Well, okay, like for Phase One, it's like twenty four movies." Mm -hmm. But if you really wanted to just do it, you could probably do it in 12. And Dan thought that was a little bit egregious. He's like, make him watch them all. And I'm like, no, uh, you're you're <coughs> like counter arguing your point when you said make him watch them all because you think phase one is a banger and you should watch all those, which I agree. But for somebody that doesn't fucking care, you do have to cut some of that shit out. And that's why I like, well, like okay, tw 12, you could do it in 12, even though it's 24 movies. When I'm recommending, it's not based off of like, um continuity it's based off of like enjoyability so for phase one and right. two like me my personal opinion is those movies are fucking all bangers like yeah i think you, you make somebody watch them all just for their own sake because they're all great uh but yeah so yeah i don't know that's really all i have to say about this movie i'm very disappointed i don't think it was a very strong introduction for kang who's supposed to be the next big bad avengers level right. threat i yeah. don't think it was a good trilogy movie phase five intro don't think it was a good phase <laughs> intro uh i really there's not much that i liked about it and uh, i hope phase six intro is a lot better yeah i don't know get me <laughs> to the it's x blade. already phase six intro is blade yeah we'll see and we already heard what, what's next in phase five guardians guardians i think will be a banger because mm. you know it's probably impossible that it won't be but it's like after Guardians, like where do we go now? Like what? You know what I mean? It's like it's all characters, like Dusty said, like nobody really gives a fuck about, and they're trying desperately to make us give a fuck about them. They're like obviously, like Cassie was the focal point of this movie because they're cl and and trying and, to build up the Young Avengers, and nobody cares about the Young Avengers. Matter of fact, Ed has told me he's like when they get to the Young <laughs> Avengers, I'm like done, I'm out completely <laughs> because nobody fucking cares, dude. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderbolts and Young Avengers is where they're going. Like, yeah, they're I know. Making, it, it feels, and then this is a, like a total Disney move. Mm -hmm. They're drilling it down to kids for kids. But it's like it's such so a stupid. It seems it's such a stupid creative decision because I might like the Young Avengers if when they show me the shit. But like, you're gonna follow up what you had started with, like you said, the heavy hitters with fucking Cassie Lang and She Hulk and fucking just. These nobody yeah. characters, like, why are you doing this to me? I feel like it should be a news flash for them, where they finally understand that parents are gonna take their kids, regardless of if it's a kid's movie or not. Yeah, with to these Marvel movies, I feel yeah. like. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, as if long the kids as they are, keep rating them like they do, if kids are reading comic books, comic books aren't like toned down or anything, which right? they're like, really not. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. It's weird. I I have a little prediction. Maybe not a prediction, but I now see a world where provided James Gunn really fucking like writes the ship on for DC. Mhm. And if Marvel continues in the path that it's doing, I could see a world where DC oh, shit. like takes over in terms of New the top hype. dog. Yeah, the hype in film. Be- yeah, yeah oh because my I, God. I, because I, I, it really just feels like Marvel has gotten comfortable, like a little too comfortable. Like they're they're coasting down the highway, they're on cruise control. Yeah. Like we've right. Uh, and I hope I'm proven wrong, but we say this after everything we do now, everything we watch. We're like, all right, this like was not that good, and we got the next one coming. We'll check it out then. It's like, okay, well, the next one hasn't been good. And it uh, and, and honestly, yeah. like, I've seen people talking, like, defending this movie, and they're like, oh, Peyton Reed's, like, a fucking genius. This guy's a fucking hack at best. Like, <laughs> he doesn't have any good fucking movies. A, a, like, The Breakup, may, oh, okay, it's a, that's a funny comedy, and Yes Man... Pretty funny movie, but like other than that, oh, and yeah, Ant Man, it's like guys fucking done nothing. Like, what are we talking about? And and he then didn't bring it on. He did bring it on. Is yeah. Real? And then the Rick and Morty writer, Rick and Morty's like, I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you just don't get it. It's like, yeah, okay, dude. The show is just like so just don't deep. Get it. I fucking well, there are many parallels between Rick and Morty in this movie. Yeah, it felt like watching many a Rick. Parallels. If this felt like watching a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when I got home, I was like, oh, the humor is very similar. So, I don't know. Didn't like it. Which, I mean, you probably just pissed off a lot of people because don't give a fuck. there are Rick and Morty people who I think it's, it is so fucking highbrow that some people don't even get it. Let me tell you something. I some don't, of those fan just don't get it. 90% about. of the reason why I don't like Rick and Morty is because of that show's shitty fan base. <laughs> just fair. say it right out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. If I had to rate this like we would normally do in a review, I, I would give this a six. That's being like super generous, super six generous. For Marvel. That's generous. Woo! And that's give generous. It a six and a half. Yeah. Damn. But it's still watch. You know, Vince. Vince went to see this and he he liked it. Did he? Yeah, he All enjoyed right. it. Shout out to but Vince. he's a huge Jonathan Majors fan. So dude, yeah. Jonathan Majors was it great. Probably in the movie. carried it a lot for him. He was. He, he was very good in this movie. And, and again, I'm excited for King. I didn't know Dan. Dan den- denigrated him a little bit, but I'm excited. It wasn't him. It wasn't one. him. It wasn't him. It was. It was, it was the way the movie portrayed him. He didn't right. D- right. like. He didn't do what you would expect. Like when the villain, the big villain, shows up. Like he, I don't know. It wasn't Majors. It wasn't him at all. He was great. He yeah. carried the movie, if anything. Right. Uh, but yeah. So that's yeah. that's my thoughts on Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bad taste. Wait. When is Secret Invasion? Is that before Guardians or no? Mm, I think Secret Invasion uh, is soon. It has not actually been confirmed when it's coming out. It's probably right. mid 2023. Didn't you say last week in your news that like they basically came out and said like you have to watch this before the like in order to watch the Marvels? <laughs> uh Maybe it wasn't I, you who said it, but I just saw something where they said like apparently Marvel like came out and was like, yeah, like you well, have- we hadn't really talked about the Marvels, so it wasn't me now. Well, somebody I saw said, like, apparently Marvel came out and said, like, you have to watch Secret Invasion to watch the Marvels. Like, they're outright just telling you that's what they're doing now. It's like, uh, okay, mm-hmm. well, whatever. <clears throat> I think Secret Invasion will still be good. I think that'll be a good one for yeah, us. I hope it'll be Six good. Six episodes. Listen. I got I got some faith. Listen, I hope, it, I hope it'll get... And, like, I didn't completely unenjoy the movie like it yeah. just it it was like enjoyable but it's just not <laughs> just shit on it for 20 minutes yeah but <laughs> it, because it, but yeah but okay like I, I of course there's fun moments in it and stuff like that but it just it, it's like it's just n- pales in comparison to what the you level gotta, of maybe you got to stop comparing it to the those well it's impossible well, and this is like yeah this like it's i mean marvin if your fiance told it's like yeah. your first heroin high. You're always chasing it. So like Stop when you go when you go through dance. phase one through three, and you're like, oh my god, that was so good. The MCU is amazing. And then yeah. they start pumping out more content of other characters that are lesser known, and you're like, oh, this isn't as good. You're, you're chasing that high, and Not you're chasing. never going to get it. Sometimes you just have to sit back and enjoy what they're delivering. There's nothing to enjoy. Don't consume it. That's what I'm trying <laughs> well, to say. You, you just said. You rated it watchable, and you said I, there's some good parts in it. Six is but- not watchable in my mind. You know that. 
Six or okay. lower is unwatchable. No, okay. this is a it's a watchable movie. It's fun. I will never watch this movie again. It's not I, I, fun. Is the wrong word. It's not fun. There's like it's spectacle. It's not fun. It's not You're fun. Confusing the audience. No, I'm not. They understand what I mean. Trust me. It's it's not a good movie. They get it. They get you can it. watch it once. Move on with your fucking life. I will never watch this again. I doubt you'll ever watch it again. It's just not one of those fucking movies. And I'm not chasing anything. I was given something. It's like if mm. your fiance Marvin was warm to you all the time. Yeah. Lovey dovey, yeah. cuddly, and all this shit. And then one day, like a switch turns off and she's being fucking cold to you. That's not you chasing the dragon of her being warm. It's her changing mm. her behavior. That's true. This is Marvel changing their quality. We've been given a certain thing. So yeah. it's they had natural a that we come to expect so. it. Well, that's the Again, thing. This is this is a third movie and uh Listen. The individual trilogy, and they haven't had great success with that yet. We keep saying, except for maybe Captain America, but like I, I again, Iron Man three wasn't that great. Thor Listen, three wasn't that great. They could get the magic back just as easily as they have lost it. They just have to. Absolutely, they got shot again. Deadpool, we're going to get a rated R movie out of that, and hopefully that'll be a fun one. Uh, Blades coming out, hopefully uh, it's going to be R rated. Well. That we're getting yes, some sir. adult service here. That's not like uh, this is Disney Disney Plus f kid service to maybe go buy some comics or watch Disney Plus shows. That's the best way I could describe this movie. If I had to describe it in one sentence, it felt like watching a Disney Plus show on a big screen. <laughs> that's okay. terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the kids don't. I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I don't think it was made for kids. I think it's just lazy writing. It's it's everything yeah. is sacrificed for the joke, for the next joke, for the next joke. Yeah. Like like when people were really there were some good jokes though. There was some funny stuff. Some, some funny stuff with Modoc too. Even though I disagree with the way they handled Modoc, but yeah, he, yeah, it was but disappointing. Like, but he was funny sometimes. Yeah, but like you know. When they were when people were really comparing DC versus Marvel, the big thing was like, "Oh, DC is so fucking dark and brooding. Like they should be more like Marvel and be more lighthearted." Marvel fucking took that shit to heart and like, "Yeah, you want lighthearted? <laughs> we go. got more of that." It's like everything's a fucking joke, and that was one of the big criticisms with Thor: Love and Thunder, which I Love enjoyed Thunder, that yeah. movie, but I agreed with that. There was so much shit in that movie that was just sacrificed for a joke, like the scene with Jane and Thor on the boat when they were going to fucking that planet or that moon that fucking gore was on yeah she just fucking told him she's dying of cancer and they're having mm -hmm. this really warm moment and then all of a sudden his fucking axe comes in it's like like why and i love taika but like come on bro like why does everything have to end on a joke i don't get yeah. it is it because like do you think that fucking like end game was like so fucking somber and like and like serious that you have to now like cleanse our palate for fucking 10 years straight. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on from Ant-Man. Uh, I'm just sick of saying, uh, okay, maybe the next one will be better. Like fix your shit, Marv. I'm sick of it. I loved yep. you and I want to continue to love you, but you're making it hard. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of news you got for us, Dusty? Nice. Okay, let's see. We'll start with uh, WB because there's not a whole lot. W. WB. W. Um. So fire Warner James Brothers... Gunn is, is trending yeah. again on Twitter. That'll be trending uh, until we're dead. Yeah, for yeah. real. <laughs> Warner Brothers Discovery has abandoned its plans to shut down Discovery Plus hmm. as a standalone service. Uh, we talked about this a while ago, probably yeah. a couple months. Yeah, when they first when they, announced when, it. When they merged, yeah, they were going to put everything together. Um, hmm. Apparently, like, HBO Max costs, like, $16 a month. Um, it's Or $10 with ads compared to Discovery Plus, which is, like, $7 a month, or $5 with ads. And they're like, if we merge wow. this all together and charge, like, 20 bucks a month, we're gonna lose a whole bunch of subscribers. For sure. So they're gonna keep they're gonna keep Discovery Plus separate. They are gonna do um, HBO Max. I think they're gonna rename it. Call it just Max. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but they are gonna then they're gonna put some of the Discovery Plus shows within the Max content so that you get more content. But they're gonna keep the Discovery Plus stuff separate so that people who enjoy, which is mostly 
I think reality television. That was going to be their focus. On the hook. That's going to be their focus All for right. that shit. So, okay. what is it? 94.9 million direct to consumer subscribers. Uh, and they put out a target of 130 million by 2025. So, they don't want those numbers to go down. They want those numbers to go up. And by merging and charging more, they feel like they're going to lose some. So, they're just going to keep that okay. as it is, apparently. Hmm. Um, let's see. Peter Saffron was asked about, because we, we haven't talked about this in a while, uh, ask about Affleck directing the, the Brave and the Bold Batman movie. Uh, he said, no, no, no. We're just talking to Ben in general about stuff. So when Ben said, I would love to direct a DC movie, uh, everybody thought, well, he's going to direct the Batman movie. That would be <clears> awesome. <throat> Saffron said, no, uh, we think we have somebody else in mind. He didn't say that, but it sounds like him saying, no, no, no. We're just talking to him in general is... We'd love to have Ben on as a director because he's a good director, but probably not going to be Batman. So, okay. And then the way. Also, uh, apparently, James Gunn's DC roadmap is fake. Hmm. What? Yeah. Um, we talked about it last time. I don't think we talked about it during with Owen on. I don't remember, but um, there was there was talks of. Um, the uh, the sale of uh, Harry Potter to Disney, right? Which the the Harry Potter IP is a WB IP. Yep. Uh, now there's rumors going around that Zasloff wants to sell or merge WB entirely with somebody. So uh, everything that James Gunn has announced is bullshit because nobody's going to want to buy WB if they've already got this roadmap lined out and there it's already in you know go mode. Um, so there's like hmm. some stories, which I think is total bullshit, just <laughs> clickbait articles. But there are some people saying that James Gunn. Speaking of which, DC, I just realized you're wearing a Superman shirt. Can you back up? Let me see that shit. Oh, that's Ooh. looking good. That's a sick pose. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, which is funny because um, James Gunn, uh, well, he he talked about he's he's talking about all his hires and stuff for his roadmap. It is allegedly fake now. Uh, Tom King has been my partner throughout all of this, Gunn said. Uh, he was giving me answers to shit before I even took the job. So me, him, uh, Crystal Henry, who worked on The Watchmen, is doing Waller. Christina Hodson, who wrote The Flash. Drew Goddard, who you guys probably know. And then Jeremy Slater, who just did Moon Knight. Uh, these are the group of the people that we're meeting with and you know, putting all this stuff together. So James Gunn is like, I already have all these fucking writers that have been doing this shit for years and I'm going to hire them and they're, we're going to fucking write this shit out. So all the shit that you're hearing about the James Gunn DC roadmap is fake. It's not that true. They're, they're fake news. Fake Let's news. Go. Thank God. Uh, Gal Gadot could Let's still go be lives. Wonder Woman. Um, <laughs> Spare us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there, there were rumors that she was done because they're doing, you know, the prequel series, which takes place like a hundred or a thousand years, I forget, before she's ever born, mm. uh, with the next Wonder or the with the next, uh, not Wonder Woman movie, I guess it would be the. Uh, oh my god, I can't think of that race. Super right now, interesting. But. Nobody wants to see Wonder Woman. We want to see a hundred years ago. Fucking god. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what they're doing. I know. So, um. Yeah, and then um. We, uh, speaking of, you know, we talked about trailers, uh, cause we didn't really do anything after the Super Bowl. We had the Fast X trailer. We also had a Flash trailer, which we got to see Ooh. like a lot of stuff. We had confirmed, we talked about which they did some shoots with Michael Keaton and they did some shoots with Ben Affleck and everybody's debating about which Batman it is. Apparently it's both of them. In uh, the trailer, see, shows both, yeah. 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 We saw, we got to see, uh, uh, Supergirl as well. Terrible this, CGI. In that Apparently, in that Sha trailer. Sasha Cal is going to be a one and done Supergirl. Real quick, <laughs> just to interrupt you for a second. What did you guys think about that trailer? I thought the trailer was good. I think his yeah, suit looked fucking dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're um, excited for that movie? This movie looks fun. Yes, it, that it would. Yeah, James Gunn's no been hyping it up. Everybody that's seen it's been hyping it up. It's been getting great reviews. So I think it's a banger. I had no idea the Flash should go to a different universe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know shit about. The Flash, apparently. This movie's based you off seem of disinterested. a... disinterested. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
big big disinterest. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's because like I I I mean I've been trained to go into DC movies being extremely disappointed. So uh -huh. I just fit. There's a couple of things, right? <laughs> uh, Andy Muschietti is directing it, I believe. He's mm -hmm. the guy who did the It movies. I think he's a very good director. Ooh, okay. So that's that. That's got me a little bit hopeful. Uh, yeah. But there are more things surrounding this movie that make me more um, tepid than anything. A is just the products that we've gotten from the DC EU thus far have been mostly terrible. Um, this is still very much part of the Snyder verse, despite what everybody else is saying. Mm. That's a big problem. Uh, <laughs> and it, James Gunn hyping it up, I think, is just marketing because the movie's made. Possibly. The movie's yeah. made. They paid for it. They're probably just saying, like, yo, James Gunn, please just get people in the seats a little please. bit. Please. <laughs> However, that might be wrong because clearly they don't give a fuck about wasting money since they paid for and made Batgirl and then just canceled it. So, right. Dropped it like a yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, bad habit. And, the fact that they Ooh. should have dropped Ezra Miller like a bad habit, mm -hmm. but kept him yeah, because early reviews of this movie were so good uh -huh. should tell you that it's probably going to be a fun, worthwhile movie. Uh, the other thing, too, is I think the inclusion of Michael Keaton is just a cheap, <laughs> like, nostalgia bait. Like, oh. Maybe. Because I get, I get vibes of, like, I get really strong Godzilla vibes. That first Godzilla movie that came out a couple years back, that was terrible. Like, that movie was... Skull Island? No, no, that that one was good. That was Kong. But I'm talking about the first, just Godzilla, that first Godzilla movie that came out that was marketed heavily on the fact that Brian Cranston was in it. 1932? <laughs> no. Oh. And he was in it for like eight seconds. Right. You don't remember when Brian Cranston? Yeah, no, I was being facetious. You oh, said oh, that oh. first Godzilla movie, which oh, is oh, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Decades. Ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, this God, Godzilla movie was like, hey, Brian Cranston's in it. He's in Breaking Bad. You all love that show. And then you go mm -hmm. sit down and watch the movie, and Brian Cranston's in it for like legitimately one scene. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm getting vibes like that with with Michael Keaton. He's everybody's favorite Batman. Let's stop pretending. I feel like it's just a seed filler. It's like, oh, Michael Keaton's back, putting on the suit uh -huh. again. There's definitely yeah. going to be some fan service in this. Of course. I mean, they show again, the trailer with the, I'm Batman. Like, that's his famous I'm line. I'm excited for this DC movie. And I, I again, I, I talked about how I never really gave Shazam a chance. Yeah. And then I finally saw it and enjoyed it. I feel like this is going to be like that type of enjoyment. Like, oh, they maybe. actually did a good DC movie. I'm hoping. Maybe. Maybe I'll be let down. But I've been let down by so many of the Snyderverse films. Yeah, I mean. That I my my expectations are tepid as well, generally. But I have a little bit more than tepid excitement. The other thing, too, is talk about the CGI. It might just be because it's in the trailer. Sometimes trailers show, like, unfinished products, which I don't know why you would do that. But that scene at the end where she's flying next to the plane, that mm, looks like yeah. a video game cutscene. Yeah. It is bad. Yeah. So... I don't know. We'll CGA. see. It's this. It's all just all the DC. It's just this very weird, like vibe about it all. Like James Gunn's like being coy about shit, and like, <laughs> you know, is this part of the DC, the new DCU, or is it not? He's saying it's like, oh yeah, this is like the starting point because well, this is gonna be yeah, yeah. This is where it'll reboot. This is the reboot. But some of those characters will come through. Yeah, I, it's this is all very weird. Just fucking give me a good Superman movie. That's all I care about at this point. <laughs> yeah. Legacy. Let's see. Legacy She's is apparently coming. been writing since 2022. So mm -hmm. before he even got hired, he was working on writing it because maybe he had premonitions that he knew he was going to get the job. Maybe. Anywho. Um, so away from all of that shit, did, uh, <laughs> you guys seen I Am Legend, correct? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. No, Smith. <laughs> did you know there was an alternate ending? No, I don't remember the regular ending. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that now that you said that. Okay, so the, the alternate ending is basically Will Smith dies. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Yep. Uh, the alternate ending is he lives. So in the book, Will Smith is actually the villain because they're really attacking him because he's dragging them out and doing all these experiments on them, trying to find a cure. Mm. And so they're mad at him 
for taking away because they're apparently sentient. So in the alternate ending, um, he like goes in with the body that he's recently had and he sets her free and they all run off and he lives. Um, so I am legend two has been announced and it is going to canonize the alternate ending. Hmm. And so Will Smith survives and it's going to move forward and it's going to be him and Michael B. Jordan. So we're getting oh, I am legend shit. two with Michael B. Jordan and Will Smith. Yeah, this one. Oh my sounds, God. Yeah, interesting. This one great, sounds bro. fun. So if you haven't seen I Am Legend in a while, go back and watch it. Uh, it's also I might a pretty just good book. go back and watch it. I but the alternate ending, movie. like I, I, I knew of it. It, I, I knew of the alternate ending, uh, but I don't think I'd really ever paid much attention to it. Actually, I'd just go back and watch it. I have find the clip on YouTube. I haven't of, seen that movie in a very long time. Yeah, it's been a while. So I went back and watched the alternate ending before uh, when I saw this. Like I went back and watched it. I was like, oh yeah, okay that. All right, that makes sense because he he really is supposed to be the villain in all of it, and not wow. the, the that zombies, I didn't know. But, yeah, I didn't know about the book. So that's a cool little spin yeah. on things. I wish the movie would have yeah. done that, but can't have a movie yeah. with Will Smith. And it would have been villain. it. It, it <laughs> might have been. I mean, I don't know. Like, is it a better movie if he dies or if he lives? Uh, I don't think that you know, matters. That's... I'm just talking about the the fact that like he's the villain in the, like the perspective of the zombies or whatever they are. Right. Yeah. I think that's yeah. cool. Now, nah, Will Smith that's... can't be a a villain the same way The Rock can't lose a fight. They got it in their contracts. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, that's all the WB news. Um, I guess we'll move on to Disney here since we've spent a whole lot of time talking about them. Yeah. Um, um, live action remakes continue despite what Walt said in a... Not so recently found note. I think he said, "Don't ever do a live action of any animated stuff." Okay, fair enough. Oh, doing that anyways. You, you guys yeah. remember that? That was yeah. pretty big news. Like, it was last year, a couple of years ago. I don't remember. Um, Zach Galifianakis has been cast in the new Lilo and Stitch uh, live action <laughs> movie. Yeah, is it a yet unnamed role? We don't know. What the fuck? Uh, but they're making a live action Lilo and Stitch. Why? I don't know. Just to make some money. Stop making live action movies of your great animated movies. It sucks. Just my yep. opinion. Maybe disagree. I have nah, not seen 100%. any of them. I did not watch Aladdin. I did not watch Lion King. Hey. I did not. Ooh, I will not never watch, watch Lion King. Little I will Mermaid not hasn't watch dropped yet. Little Mermaid. Uh, I will not oh, watch Lilo and Stitch. I will not watch any of these live action movies. I don't give a fuck about them. Please stop doing this. Remember the Little Mermaid uh, drama? Um, oh my god, it was huge. I can't wait yeah. for that. They huge actually drama. uh that was another one. That was a trailer that we got for Super Bowl. Oh, so we I got to see, see more of her as Ariel. Aladdin was good uh, though. I'll I give forgot it. about the Aladdin I one completely. One. I didn't, didn't watch it and nope. I'm never gonna watch it. No, it was actually nope. good. Just, it was good. Don't care. There's only one thing don't I didn't care. like about it, and they <laughs> added an extra song and it didn't seem to fit, but that was it. Ooh, yeah. But it was good though. I cried um, during Whole New World. Watch. I did. Uh, so the I guess I actually take that back. Um, <clears throat> what is the one live action? It was the uh, Emperor's Close. No, was it the Emperor's? What was the one? Jungle Book. No, it wasn't the Jungle Book. Um, the girl who joined the army uh, oh, as a man. Mulan. Yes, Mulan. Yeah, that I was the only was live action. Just because uh, Jet Li was in it, and Jet Li. Uh, yeah, oh, Jet Li was, was like, in it. Oh shit. I heard he has it was like terrible. some sort of disorder where like he's not going to act anything really, I think, anymore. And I'm a huge Jelly fan. I loved his stuff before Fuck they even knew he's like he was in Lethal Weapon 4 and he didn't speak any English because they didn't know he spoke English. And after Lethal <laughs> Weapon 4, he became a huge American icon. But like his Dude. stuff before that, like Fist of Legend mm -hmm. or any of those old Chinese movies that are dubbed. Right. Like, uh, great Jelly fan. So I watched that out of. <laughs> Just out of respect, but uh, uh, any other ones? No, don't give a fuck about it. Sorry. Yeah, no, nah, I, I respect that. I was pleasantly surprised. I don't surprised. even know if I'm going to watch the Mermaid, bro. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to watch it because we're going to have shit. to talk about it because of the fucking <laughs> that is the true. We anti gotta, gotta, nerds. Yeah, we got to fight the, We got to fight them. Yeah, That's but true. but I thought I thought Aladdin was good. I was pleasantly surprised because uh, my main surprise was that Will Smith as Genie did a really good job um, respecting... What Robin, Robin Williams, Williams did, yeah. while also mm -hmm. making the character his own. Don't care. 
<laughs> Sorry about Who is it. Jafar? I don't remember. Some Indian guy, I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know him. I see it now. Yeah. Uh, oh, so more upsetting news for me. Ugh. A trilogy that had one of the most satisfying ends of all time is now getting its fifth fucking film. Indiana Jones? No. Toy <laughs> Story 5. Oh, as God. Enough. Tim Allen got on Twitter, said he's back as Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear's uh, campaigning for Trump. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else has really been announced. I just I just saw the tweet. It was trending. I thought it was interesting. And as they have announced it and it's confirmed, we are getting a Toy Story 5. Bro, um, let me tell you something is, real quick about Tim it Allen. Is Buzz Lightyear mm-hmm. gay? Or no. is that not canon? I don't think so. I don't know. Not that I know of. But that was a thing, right? I don't know. Wasn't that a thing? No well, idea. They, what I do think is funny, though, Tim Allen's been going tripping. around on this fucking, like, uh, victim tour about how he's been a victim of the woke mob trying to get canceled. These fucking right-wingers, bro, they call they like to call other people snowflakes. They're the biggest fucking snowflakes ever because they get Sometimes called out. Are, yeah. Because they get called out on some shit. They're like... Ugh. Anyway. There's some real crybabies over there. You're right. you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. It's crazy. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I uh, had Toy Story Four again. the The original trilogy was just amazing. Like that that friendship trilogy between you know Buzz and Woody. Toy was Story just so Three satisfying. is a masterpiece. And they ended it. And they ended it there. But then they were like, "Hey, let's make some more fucking money and pump out another one." Hey, yeah, let's course. make some more money. Let's pump out another one. Live action. What? Lightyear? Let's do it. Hey, let, wait, let's make Toy Story 5. Like, stop it already. Just come up with a new idea, please. I don't and, even remember um, if I saw Toy Story uh, 4. I must have. That's the one. Oh, that's the one where they go to, like, the amusement park and shit, right? They're at, like, the carnival. Uh, four. I don't think I saw four. Is three the one where they almost got burned up in the fire and it was, like, super sad? That was three, three right? Three's the one or was where they no. Three's the one where they get donated to the to the nursery school, yeah. and then Andy what? gives them away at the end. Yep. Four. I think you're thinking that's of the four. one where they almost got burned up, right? No, I think that's four. Maybe I don't remember. Four, I think, was the one where they go to where they're in like the uh, the carnival because they get put in a toy store by accident hmm. or something like that. I don't remember. Anyway, stop making these fucking anyway. movies. Do something else. <laughs> no, yeah. Please stop. Yeah. Please stop. Um, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes wrapped up production. Ooh. Another I'll watch those Planet for the rest of, of my life. Um, Just keep making those. That's, that's, a, one, that's a banger trilogy those. right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, expected May twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. West Ball is directing. He's the most known for I think the Maze Runner series. Not a whole lot more. I don't know if you guys saw mm. the Maze Runner shit. I, I saw the first Maze Runner. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was interesting, but not that great. So not that great. Yeah, I we'll, agree. We'll see. But mm. yeah, we get another another Planet of the Apes on the way with the digital monkeys. So we'll <laughs> see how that goes. They're chimps coded. I mean, yeah, Dusty. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you don't like those movies? I love it. Um, They're great. It's fucking Caesar, he's oh my god, hard. Caesar's such a gangster. I like the first one, the second was okay. The third one was probably a little bit better than the second one, but I wasn't too impressed with the trilogy as a whole. Like, huh. mm. it was okay, but again, it's a remake of something that was already great, like the original Planet of the Apes movies. Oh, while, yeah, that shit was crazy. While the graphics, um, is all you know, <laughs> primitive. shit. It was still a great story and a great movie. So yeah, I actually uh, saw the, broke, don't the one fix from it. the sixties. I actually saw right. that one. Heston. Yeah, yeah. There's a little Easter egg there in uh, the original, in the first one of this new trilogy, yeah. where his like in the beginning of the movie that like space shuttle launch. It's actually Charlton Heston's shuttle. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. So so he when he comes back is when now it's dominated by apes. Wow. Um. Yeah. So, oh yeah. All this. So this one, Walt Disney Company is going to restructure a little bit. Uh, they're going to restructure into three divisions. They're seeking five point five billion dollars in cost cuts because, like, unlike WB, who is bleeding money from their last merger, Disney's still making money, even though Fox wasn't the greatest merger. That was their last one. 
Uh, they're trying to make cuts and reduce the workforce by about 7,000 jobs. But, you know, uh, even though we're in a transitory um, no, recession for good the last lay a lot of two years, uh, lots of companies are laying people off, but Disney is cutting 7,000 jobs. It's going to be Disney Entertainment, ESPN, <clears throat> and then Disney Parks and Experience Products. So they're basically cutting it up into three different companies and laying off a bunch of people. Uh, nice. Know, that's, as as expected with the way the economy is going right now, but mm-hmm. we don't really talk politics, so we'll move along from that one pretty quickly. <laughs> um, but they're also slowing production of Disney Plus shows that we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but nothing has been confirmed Good. except um, the superhero fatigue is here. Um, and with the VF, VF, VFX gossip of uh, the Disney Plus shows like She-Hulk and some of the other shit that they put out, there was like... You know, they're rushing VFX uh, companies because they outsource it. Now they're bringing mm-hmm. it in, in-house. in But uh, Loki and The Secret Invasion are the only two confirmed shows for this year. Um, previously, they had Ironheart, uh, Echo, and Agatha Coven of Chaos all on the lineup for 2023. But they think pumping that much shit out mm-hmm. is part of the problem. So that stuff's all getting pushed back maybe next year or even later. Who knows? So we're really only getting Secret Invasion and Loki this year. Okay, this I'm is what's fine. confirmed. Cool. Good. Give me Which less. Which I'm fine with too. Yeah. I want less. Give us less. Don't give a Spread fuck about Agatha. You, you got a lot of time to make some money. But th- the problem is, and <clears throat> this is what we've talked about before, is character casting. Like when you have a universe and you cast somebody as a character – you want to pump out as much content for them as as you can before they're too old to play the part. So they're kind of on a catch twenty two here of me. some of the people they cast. The world is not old. clamoring for a Agatha show. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I agree. it doesn't matter how old Catherine Hahn is because who the fuck cares about that character? Well, Especially some of it'll if play gonna, into the Scarlet Witch story, I'm sure which we it will, may, may but it is not thing. necessary to fucking just jam that shit into a fucking have a third show for the year just because. Give me less. Give me less, True. Disney. Come on. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kevin Feige gave an update on Blade recently. Uh, Jan Demange, Demange, Demange. Domingue? I don't know how you say his last name. Sorry about it. Um, he's the director. He's in Atlanta uh, where filming will begin. Uh, filming is set to begin in about 10 weeks. Uh, that, again, as we stated, that movie is going to kick off phase six. So Blade right. is moving forward. There was a lot of reports that it was having trouble because directors were, they were bouncing directors and screenplay writers and shit. But Kevin Feige gives a positive update on Blade. So mm, there's nice. some good news there that, uh, uh, you know. Could be fake news. It's, <laughs> eh, could be. That's right. I can't wait um, for Blade. Also, yeah, I want to say I can't wait, but yeah. this rate. Yeah, Marvel, come on now. This rate, he'll be cracking jokes. <laughs> uh, we talked about Secret Wars a little bit. Um, Steven Broussard has hinted that the MCU is done with RDJ. Mm-hmm. So while you have speculated, Dan, personally, that you believe 100% that Iron Man will be... I can't imagine he wouldn't. I mean, they're bringing Broussard in... Broussard is hinting that he, they're done with him. They're trying to pump up these new characters. So maybe, maybe he's just, you know... Um, pulling the rug from under us for the sake of doing it, but he's pretty much saying that they're done with RDJ and Iron Man is no more. Okay. So. Mm. There's that. Um, Ronda Rousey reportedly in talks to take on a major role in Captain America New World Order. She was actually in talks to be Captain Marvel um, a while back before they cast uh, uh, what's her face? Brie Larson. Brie Larson, thank you. Um, but that never happened, never came to fruition. So um, she's in talks to take on a major role in Captain America, New World Order. Okay. What it is, we don't know, because anytime there's a casting rumor, it's a as yet unnamed every time I fucking talk about it. Right. So. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, okay. So 
when since we talked about this movie for you know 20 30 minutes thor was the first character to receive a fourth solo film that's true in the mcu oh, wow. and uh while it's been confirmed that spider-man and captain america will be receiving a fourth film features even though the fourth captain america film is not going to be steve rogers shame uh, what yeah yeah it's your oh. It's fucking yes. Yeah, Steve Rogers is an old man. That's on the right. It's ca- it's Captain. Fucking, it's yeah, it's yeah. A Falcon. Yeah. Hashtag See? not my Captain. Remember? America. Yeah. We talked about this. We, we talked something about the selfishness of him. Yeah. With, with that. But they're already in talks. About. Remember that? No. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about something. Uh, oh, yeah, we, we were comparing. Talk. We were comparing Captain America to Superman. Yeah. Oh, and their, yeah, their, yeah. Their selflessness, and I was like, Captain America isn't really that selfless because he. Retired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> so, um, even though the movie just came out, there's already talks of making an Ant-Man 4, so it will be the next movie Wait, another to Ant-Man? get a fourth, a fourth film. So we've got Somebody Thor, squashed this motherfucker right? already. We're sick of <laughs> we got, it. <laughs> we got Thor. We got Captain America without Steve Rogers. And we got uh, Ant-Man. And what was the other one that I said? Spider Man. Spider Man's getting a fourth movie. You need to watch the Spider Man's, huh? Yeah. Steven Bissard confirmed sure confirmed that talks are already happening. Uh, but I mean, and you know, Ant Man, it's it's a Marvel movie that I'm sure they'll make it. It'll do well. And lastly, but not least, in the Disney news, giant freaking robot revealed that Agents of Shield is canon. Get okay. fucked, Dan. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, we've, but, <laughs> we've gone back and forth on this. Now, I've never said it wasn't canon. But eh, go ahead. Okay, I've got the receipts. Don't, don't no, go there. I've never said it wasn't canon. You talk about it like it's integral uh, to the MCU when it's not. But go ahead, continue your news. I've got the receipts. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, according to the comments, Secret Wars is one of the most expansive stories that Marvel has ever concocted as it features many timeline versions of the characters that we all know and love. Well, through our trusted and proven sources, we can report that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are going to be part of the Avengers Secret Wars. Nice. So. Hashtag bring back Colt, Colton. Coulson? Coulson. Coulson. Phil. S- Phil Coulson. Son of Cole. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah. We've, we've nice. debated strongly about whether or not it's canon. I know you say... I've never said it right wasn't now, canon. I just said it's not integral to the MCU. Because it's not. Dan, I have the receipts. Go ahead. Go find them. Pull them up. You you literally messaged me. It's not canon. Get over it. You literally messaged me that. That was probably just me being a dick. Okay. All right. That's fair. I'm just saying. Like, that's the same. It's 100 because it's the same as canon. like Netflix Daredevil. Yeah, it's in the MCU, and they mentioned the Battle of New York, but it has well, there's no no. no. You gotta I'm let, gonna stop you right. Just let me finish. Okay, go ahead. Because I'm gonna say go what ahead. your rebuttal is. I <laughs> always will say what your rebuttal is. Just keep that in mind. I understand that it it plays off of the events of the films more than Daredevil does, hundred percent. But the films never ever talk about the show. That's why I say when I say it's not canon, that's what I mean. The show plays off the movies, but not vice versa. There's nothing that happens well, in the show that crosses over into the films. Ever. Yes. Other yeah. than Whoa, what? settle down there, bro. What? Okay, well, let's let's go. Let, all right, Agents or uh, Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. What? Because the all Avengers right. are doing stuff. That means that it, that was started in. Do a, you know? Okay, wait, wait. The what? What's the town they're saving? Sokovia. Yeah. Sokovia's up up in the air. Uh huh. How do they save those people? In Avengers. Yes, Avengers: they, Age of Ultron. They fucking like air. A helicarrier shows up. Oh my god! Right? It's so connected. Right. What? Do you know who built that helicarrier? Who? Phil Coulson in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Phil Coulson was in the original Avengers and in Thor and in Iron Man. Yeah, he's he's and the in, fallen Avenger. He's okay, the right. fallen Avenger. But he's, yeah. but, okay, he's an but Avenger. You just, you just did but, not you did not prove my point wrong. Uh, okay, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they yeah. built the helicarrier. And Nick Fury says, I got some help from, from some friends in the movie. And Nick Fury is in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It is 100% <laughs> directly tied okay. to the fucking films. Uh, I didn't see, Again, the show is tied to the films. The films are not tied to the show. That's oh, yeah. the distinction. Okay. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah. If Phil Coulson reappears at some point, 
then I'll that's say, one thing oh, okay, that pissed sure. me off about yeah. Other than and 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 Miss and Captain Marvel doesn't count because that was in the past before he died. Right. But yeah. well, and apparently he'll sh- maybe he'll show up, but I I don't know uh, because Secret Wars. I mean, Phil Coulson his superpower is that he can't die because he's died like six times. Everyone's gonna be in fucking Secret Wars. Good luck. So, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, anywho, on to the everything else news, the etc. News. Uh, we already talked a little bit about the Super Bowl trailers. We got Fast X. We got Flash. Um, we got a Guardians 3 trailer. Um, we got a trailer called Air, which looked interesting. I don't know if you guys saw that one. Nope. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Chris Tucker, Jason oh, I did Damon, see that tonight, Marlon actually, Wayans, the and theater. Viola Davis. This is about uh, Nike trying to revitalize their dying basketball shoe business. And um, it's about them signing go Jordan. Out, sign Jordan yeah, and I make see. the shoe. I saw uh, the trailer. Make the Air Jordan. This this looks amazing. I'm looking forward to that one. I had no idea uh, that uh, Jordan, they like Air Jordans were created when he was just a rookie. I thought I didn't know they were yeah. around for that long. Yep. Huh. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that he was already established. When that's what I. That's him. what I thought. I mean, that's crazy. He wasn't established as a professional. But he was already established as a great athlete, like his sure. college years, and then like because I think this is like this takes place around 1984, and I think he had already done because this was back in the day when they were taking like yes. non-professional players to the Olympics. He was a rookie in the NBA, he, which is like unprecedented. Olymp- yeah, it was to sign a deal like yeah, that. right. Mm. Uh, but anyways, that looks good. <clears throat> um, we also got a Ted Lasso. I don't know if it's a trailer. Or a teaser, but we also confirmed that that uh, season three is March fifteenth. Oh damn, that's soon. So day before my yeah, birthday, it's coming out, coming out soon. real quick. Speaking of birthdays, yeah. today's Owen's birthday. Did you guys wish him a happy yep. birthday? Shout out! I sure Owen, did. Yeah. I actually he's forty-three paid him. years old. <laughs> he's forty-three. <laughs> um, yeah, I gave him five dollars for a bet I made for during the Super Bowl. So nice. That was his birthday present for me. He said no. He said not to pay me. I was like, no. <laughs> I always pay my bets on. So that was his birthday present. Nice. We also got a Mandalorian trailer, and that's coming out March first. Nice. So we're getting a lot of shows Another, in March. How many yeah. seasons is Mandalorian? Four. No, this, this is four. season three. Three? Is it? I thought it. Three or four. It's already three. Se- se- well, no, this three. is three. Yeah, you're right. This yeah, one. this is season right. three. Right. March first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we. But, but you might be confused because we did get some Mandalorian in the Boba Fett show, so maybe that's mm-hmm. why you guys think it's a season. But I don't think I don't know. Did you guys watch Boba Fett? I did. I did okay, not. So maybe I do want to watch The Mandalorian though. It looks okay. good. Um, and this is already old news, but Titanic passed Avatar: The Way of Water to become the third highest grossing movie of all time again. What they re-released? And you might be Wait, confused. What? Oh, you might be they confused by that. But yes, this is what they do. They re-release stuff overseas in movies to make a little bit of money to gen it up. Um, so uh, it's I already been Titanic. passed again. Avatar: The Way of Water is still the third highest grossing, but for a short time, uh, it passed Titanic, and then Titanic passed it, and then I passed Titanic again. So, <laughs> you know that fucking bullshit news, but had to be said. Uh, Hellboy is getting yet another reboot. This will be the third reboot in as so many years. Uh, it's. Dark Horse Comets, he's an interesting character. He's a good character. The first movie was all right. I didn't really enjoy the sec- the first reboot, which is the second one. Uh, but apparently this one's getting an R rating, so maybe it will be better. Did you guys Ooh. see either of the Hellboy movies? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's three of them because the first one had a sequel, and then they did a, they did a reboot a couple of years back. The Ron oh. Perlman ones are great. The one with what's his the name? Ron Perlman. Yeah. Yeah. The Ron Perlman. Yeah, I've seen one the, of those. Ron Perlman was the first. Yeah, the other one was not as good. I, fr- mm. I was a uh, dude from Stranger Things. Yep. David um, Harbour. Yeah, David Harbour. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, not as good, but then this one is supposed to be getting an R rating. Uh, <clears throat> Brian Taylor is directing. He did the Crank movies with Jason Statham. Uh, gamer with Gerard Butler, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, and The Happy Show, which we uh, talked about. Oh, Crank. Yeah. I was trying to think. I remember Crank. Fucking, you think yeah, Crank Yankers was... or something? No, no. I remember. I saw Crank. I saw the. Well, I saw both of them, I believe. Yeah. Jason Statham. Guy yeah, has to stay, stay awake and stay high and stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> 
Just straight um, action. Those are great. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of action, John Wick 4 to have the longest oh. runtime of the franchise. Uh, the runtime has been released at two hours and 49 minutes. So the John Wick kill count. If you guys keep track of that kind of stuff, it's going to be, be probably <laughs> the highest it's ever been, which is amazing. Looking forward to that movie. Keanu Reeves is Hell awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, Two hours and 49 minutes? That's sick. Yeah. Dude. Almost three I'm down, hours I'm down for that. Away. I'm yeah, down for that. Looking forward to it. No release date yet that I, I believe. So. Um, it says March 24th. I don't know if that's true. That's Google. Maybe. You know Google's known to yeah. lie. I don't know. Um, we talked about Godzilla a little bit. The MonsterVerse is coming to Apple TV. It puts out some bangers from time to time. Yeah. Uh, this is an untitled Godzilla and the Titan series. It's a 10-episode order has been made. Matt Shackman is directing the first two episodes. Um, he talked about this being... Uh, heavy VFX, which means a hefty price tag per episode. But we're getting into that era of like shows that cost two, three, five million per episode because of the graphics and the VFX that go into it. So that's not entirely surprising, but uh, Godzilla and the other Titans will play a major role in the story. No release date yet, but Apple TV is going to uh, jump into the monsterverse and give us some Godzilla shit, which I'm kind of looking forward to. I don't know. We'll see. Hell yeah. More Godzilla. Apple, like good. you said, Apple puts out good shit. So mm-hmm. anything they put out is probably worth the watch. Right. And it's not going to be like, uh, you know, what was it? Skull Island where you didn't see a whole lot of King Kong. I mean, he was there, mm. but he didn't do a whole lot where this yeah. is. Uh, Matt is saying they're playing the Godzilla and the Titans are all going to play a major role in this. So we'll see. And something else that we talked about. Uh, Riddick Furia. Oh, David Tui is getting back with Vin Diesel. Uh, we will see a return to Riddick's homeworld where we finally get to explore Riddick's genesis, his origin. Ooh. He's going to find that he's not the last of his kind because he's going back to his homeworld and he's not so different from other Furians. And David Tui is the guy who did the original Riddick with Vin Diesel. So hopefully it gets a proper. Um, yeah. Know you what know, you mean. It gets a proper doing. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I was excited to hear about that news. We get getting because um, after the second Riddick, you know, they kind of rebooted it a little bit and that one wasn't as good, but it was all right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is uh, an actual. Proper sequel. Um, Early reports suggest the God of War Amazon series will bypass Kratos' earlier years in ancient Greece, i.e. the original trilogy of the games, which most people love, and start from this era of games instead. So we're basically getting Kratos and the kid Atreyu, or or whatever the fuck his name is, that's where the show's going to kick off. Always well, got to have it. a buddy That's show with a kid and a fucking adult. Fucking I'm terrible, so sick dude. of it. And the kid will be annoying yeah. and arbitrary. I mean, I can't stand it. the original dude. trilogy is what made this series. It's so good. And and it is so good. That lore is amazing. God of War 3 is not that great. One and two. God of no, War one two. and two. One and two yeah. are amazing. Two is like yeah, one of the best bangers. games ever made. Yeah. Did you know that it was vo- uh, it was voiced by a black dude yeah. in, in the games? Yep. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Fucking guy from a living um He has a TikTok. From fucking living single. Yeah. yeah, he has a TikTok, and he does. Oh, the does Kratos, he? And he does the Kratos voice. Yeah, nice. Yes. He'll like respond awesome. to people's comments as Kratos. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking amazing. But yeah, oh, yeah, we're getting we're getting a God of War uh, Amazon series, but it's gonna kick <laughs> off with the current gen of God of War. Can't wait to see. Yeah. After can't wait the to success. not watch. I can't wait to see I mean, after the success of Last of Us how many fucking video game adaptation shows we're gonna get over the next <laughs> couple of years. Yeah, trying to yeah. That's true. Someone make a Bioshock fucking series. Oh Ooh, my god! Shit. Uh, actually, I please think make they it. Might Lord. be making one. I don't remember. I'd have to look that up and Dude. report on it next week. But I'm not sure. I think they are, but I don't know. They gotta explore um, the multiverse if they make that. That would yeah. be so good. It's canon, dude. Please, please, please. 
Oh my God. Going Bad. back to Mac, Matt Shackman, uh, he has stepped down <clears throat> or he had stepped down as the director of Star Trek four, um, to do, uh, the fantastic four movie. So Star oh. Trek four was kind of up in limbo. He's, He's a big name fantastic now. Four. After, yeah, after, big after, name. after, uh, no, I mean, uh, he did WandaVision. the first three. Well, he did the for the Star Trek trilogy as well. Which well, no, I know, but the he, franchise. He, I'm saying he's become just like a huge name now. He fucking started yeah. out like doing shows, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> now, like everybody funny. wants him. What a yeah. come up! That's yeah, big come up. He's gotta um, be. He's but, gotta be feeling good now. Oh yeah. Yeah, he gave an update on Star Trek Four. Uh, he doesn't have much to say about it except that. Um, they're still working on it, and they're working on basically what his vision was for the fourth one. Uh, he hates that he had to step away from it, but he prefers doing Fantastic Four. Yeah, he prefers yeah, that no check shit. that he's getting. That's right. Yeah, yeah I prefer tens of yeah, millions. Yeah, yeah. I prefer the extra couple mil that I'm getting from Marvel. I mean, the sequel was thought to be it was thought to be dead. Paramount actually removed Star Trek Four from their release calendar altogether. You see, Speaking so of, everybody thought it was dead. I never really like, got yeah, into Star still Trek. On it. Yeah, I completely no. degaff about Star Trek, but that'll be where the that'll be where the true test comes into play now with Marvel. What? Once we get past all this fucking dumb dog shit that nobody cares about, we'll see how they deal mm. with the the the, the class the, the more classic stuff. They got again. they still got more A listers. Even more yeah. A-listers than fucking Tony Stark. Tony Stark's not a fucking A-lister by any stretch in the comic books. Up, yes, he is. What are you talking? Only about? Only after the movies. He ain't. No. He ain't Bullshit. more. He ain't more A-list than the X-Men. He's not more A-list than Spider-Man. He's not more A-list than Cap. He's not more A-list than fucking He's Fantastic Four. He's on the Four. same list. Disagree. He's not. He's like a B-lister <laughs> throughout the comic books. You're His so wrong. I'm not. His popularity <laughs> skyrocketed after the movie. Bullshit. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's see how they handle their next set of A-listers with Fantastic Four and X-Men. That'll be the true test. Has Marvel really died? Obviously, oh you don't God. read they fuck up very, much, and, oh. very many comics. I do, but because you liked him does not he's, mean that he's, he's a popular no, character. He's, <laughs> he's pivotal in I didn't every say he wasn't single pivotal. major... Was he Marvel uh, was Age he, of Apocalypse? Absolutely. Was he, Civil War? Absolutely. Civil War is Iron Man versus Captain America. And that was one of the biggest fucking. So you're going to tell uh, me. I know what it is. You're not telling me nothing I don't know. Well, you're going to tell me. A, a, that a B lister is win against Captain America. Yeah, sure. Okay, Dan. You're going to tell me that he is not more popular after these films than he ever was in the comic books prior. Uh, to people that never read comics? Probably. What the fuck have I just been taught? This guy is out of his mind. Continue with the news, please. You're upsetting me. <laughs> All right. That's well, what I'm uh, talking about. I'm not talking about comic your book readers. I'm not talking about your A-listers. One of your A-listers. I'm not talking about comic book readers. One of your A-listers. Yeah. And Matter this fact, is not... Spawn is more popular in the wider pop culture outside of comic books than, than Iron mm. Man, so... I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Get wrecked. <laughs> Go ahead. You'd have to prove that one to me. So, one of your A-listers outside of the MCU... One of way, my A-listers? Amazon and Sony Pictures... Oh, God. Before ...are developing make... a live-action Spider-Man noir... TV series. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Or is Uziel is set to write an executive producer show alongside Amy Pascal and Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse producers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. The comic book followed a new incarnation of Peter Parker during the Great Depression of the 1930s as he became a more violent Ooh. variant of Spider-Man. The TV series will maintain the basic premise of the comic. However, it will not feature... Peter Parker as the main character. Maybe we'll get a Miles Morales Spider-Man War. Who knows? Uh, Sony's also developing a Spider-Man adjacent live action series called Silk Spider Society. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, former Walking Dead showrunner Angela Kang no, uh, signed on show. to guide the project uh, late last year. So, a Walking yeah. Dead showrunner? I, I don't know. Dead in, I, dead I, in listen, the water. Dead in the water. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like Spider-Man War. It looks think, sick. I'm looking at the artwork. Listen, if 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 Amazon spends as much money as they're spending on episodes right now, like when they like if they're spending three yeah. to five million an episode and they do that for a Spider-Man show, it's gonna be good. They could spend eight billion dollars an episode. 
Walking Dead, looking back on it, is one of the worst shows that's ever existed on TV. All right? Yeah. I fucking... I wish I never watched it. Give him a chance, then. No, it's, I'll give him a chance. I like Spider-Man. The noir thing's cool. Amazon's got money and Sony. Why is it going yeah. to Amazon, not Disney Plus? That seems weird. Oh, because Sony controls it, so they can do what the they Sony's want. Sony's That's bitch. right. Yeah, yeah. Sony's making that money, and Jeff Bezos opened his checkbook and said, what's it going to take for me to get Spider-Man? I bet you Jeff Bezos, Bezos doesn't even know who <laughs> Spider-Man is. There you go again. He I, there dude, you go again. Jeff Bezos doesn't give a fuck. People think I guarantee you he knows who Iron Man is. Well, no, people think that Jeff Bezos like makes decisions on a daily basis. He does not. He's on his fucking volcano fortress island. Well, he lives. Jeff Bezos is a <laughs> nerd though. Like he, yeah, he like true. he he fully like basically funded like the yeah, the, yeah, 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 the Lord yeah. of the Rings. And all the dark shit, nerd. Man. Yeah, the, all the, the all the sci-fi stuff that's coming to Amazon Prime right. is because of Bezos. So I think remember, that he'll give it a chest treatment. But who you knows? You guys we'll remember see. when uh Bezos was trying out those remote controlled robot hands and he was doing the fucking villain <laughs> laugh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, he is an actual yeah. villain. What a funny, <laughs> what a funny coincidence. <laughs> what a funny coincidence. That shit was so yeah. funny, bro. Yeah, that's all the news we have this week. There all was right. a lot of it nice. because we weren't around last weeks. week to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you two for the work. news, Dusty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's Thanks, get Dusty. into today's review. Uh, we're talking about the Fablemans. Yes, yes, sir. And don't forget, Marvin, uh, when the horizon's up or when the horizon's on the top or on the bottom, that's interesting. True. That's true. M middle, middle horizon is fucking boring. Who gives That's a shit? Facts. That's yeah. facts. Who gives a shit? Change the game. Um, yeah, Fablemans is directed by the great Steven Spielberg. Arguably, <laughs> I don't know if it's arguable at this point, probably the greatest filmmaker of all time. Uh, it was written by Steven Spielberg, and it serves as a sort of um, uh, autobiographical story of, of his childhood, growing up yeah. and how he became... A filmmaker. It's loosely based off of his childhood, as far as I know. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> we have our main characters, Michelle Williams playing Mitzi Fableman, the family mother. Uh, Gabriel LaBelle playing Sammy Fableman. Paul Dano playing Bert mm. Fableman. Uh, Seth Rogen playing Benny. And uh, <laughs> Judd Hirsch yeah. making a small appearance as Uncle Boris. At and, the end, yeah. And, uh, no, that was more in the middle, um, like beginning, Wait, middle sorry. beginning. I'm thinking of uh, like second act. I'm think, yeah, I'm thinking of something else. Sorry. No, that's cool. And uh, yeah, a bunch of kids that I've never heard of, but um, but yeah, pretty good cast here. Uh, this movie, great cast. Yeah, Fablemans is nominated for seven Oscars this year, uh, including best director, uh, best original score by the great John Williams. Uh, best movie of the year, best performance by an actress in a leading role, Michelle Williams nominated, best performance by an actor in a supporting role, Judd Hirsch for like the five minutes that he's in the movie, which is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. Best original screenplay by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner and best achievement in production design. Uh, that's that's like a throwaway one. Yep. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited to watch this movie. Of course, it's Steven Spielberg, so... Mm -hmm. I'm for sure going to go check it out. Although I didn't watch his last movie, um, which was uh, West Side Story, because oh. that movie, I think pretty much like... Musical? Well, it's a musical, but I but it also was like in, in trying to be inclusive and like true to the content and not whitewash anything. It was not inclusive to white people who don't speak Spanish or anybody who doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah. Because apparently, if, as far as I heard, this movie was released with no subtitles. And it's primarily in Spanish. I think that was what I heard. What the fuck? At the time, yeah. So I didn't get to see that, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah. Fableman starts out, uh, we meet young little Sammy, and he's dragged out to the movie theater by his parents. And this is like a post-World War II world, like very early on uh, in like the 50s, 40s, 50s. And he's taken to see uh, the greatest, what is it, the greatest showman? Or no, the greatest show on earth or something like that, an old movie yep, involving right. a train crash. And uh, the kid becomes, he's pretty scared. 
of what yep. he saw on screen, doesn't really know how to process it because he's a child. And his mom uh, has a good idea and says, hey, let's take your toy train set and make it crash. We'll video it so you can watch it over and over again until you're not scared anymore. And in yep. doing so, we come to Great find parenting. out. I agree. Yeah. And in doing so, we come to find out that Sammy has a, not only in a uh, an interest in the art of filmmaking, but a, quite an eye as well. Yeah, he's got the eye. Knack for it. Yeah, yep. yeah, he does. He's got the eye. Uh, but this isn't really too. I mean, y while yes, this is a story about like a kid growing up and be. This, I mean, this is a coming of age story. Uh, it actually reminded me a lot of this movie called Boyhood that came out mm. uh, not too long ago. Uh, Boyhood is an incredible movie, and that was directed by. Um, Richard Linklater and Boyhood was shot over the course of like 12 years, I think, or 14 years because they used the same actors of the children. So you witness the children growing up into their teenage years. Wow. Um, mm. And That's it's devotion. Yeah. And it's a, it's just a coming of age story. And this reminded me very much of that because I mean, really there's not much going on in this movie. It's a drama. We see a lot of familial stuff, which we'll talk about. Um, yep. But <clears throat> Really, the 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 fact, I mean, I feel like people, the narrative around this movie is that like, oh, this is about Steven Spielberg's childhood. It's, it, it, I feel like it's not really. I mean, who knows what is truth and what isn't? But also, the movie really isn't about a kid becoming a filmmaker. It's about using the art of film to discover not only who you are, but also like the people around you. Because, yeah. yeah, through his camera lens, he he he's able to uncover like who people really are. That's right. Yeah, um, and that plays a role in the biggest sort of tension in the film. Yep, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, Several big tensions in the film, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention the, the, oh, the one, mention the, the one with his mom, the one with the bully. I mean, it. it the bully was less of a tension, I feel like, more of a resolution than anything. Sure. Although I guess yeah. you can consider what happens with his mom a resolution as well. So uh, let's talk right. about that a little bit. So um, as I mentioned, Michelle, what the what the movie is really about, I think, uh, ultimately is is um, again we've talked about this recently. This theme of of doing not only what you love, but sort of what you were meant to do. Right? Uh, we talked right. about it with Rounders. We talked about it with uh, Amsterdam. And now it's in this movie as well. And it's done really well in this movie because you get to see um, both sides of the of the argument, right? So Paul Dano's character, Bert, the father of the household, he is a brilliant um, engineer, I guess, like a mechanical yep. engineer, I got the impression of. Mm. And the beginning of the film, he's working for, he's like a low ranking employee for i think was it was it ge general uh, or that was yeah the, so it, it was one of those companies g something of the likes and then he went on yeah yeah and and throughout, a computer engineer basically right throughout the film he, he's getting higher and higher positions at different companies ultimately getting a job in california for ibm um but he's a brilliant mechanic and throughout the movie he's very disrespectful to sammy's passion for filmmaking he always refers to it as a uh a hobby um yeah. someday you'll grow out of it maybe i should have right. put my foot down a little bit harder um whereas michelle williams character mitzi the mother of the family she was way more nur um uh nurturing in, in nurturing his, yeah in in yep. the in the passion for filmmaking she's the one that set him down that path that mm -hmm. actually helped him as a kid yes so. And it's because that was a release for him almost. Yeah, and it's because she herself is an is an artist. She's a she's mm -hmm. a very talented pianist, and dancer and singer and all this stuff. Uh, but it's it pretty in, in apparent right off the bat that she, uh, that's where the tension lies between her and her husband Bert. Um, they she loves him very much as she says many times in the movie, but um, there's just that barrier there of 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 an artist versus a very like straight and narrow, like, yeah. just, like got to get a job, get paid, do what I got to do type of guy. The logical thinker, the tinker. Yeah. And, uh, that's the, the theme throughout the movie. And clearly again, as I said, there's 
uh, many tensions there. She's you realize very early on that she's sort of like feels trapped. How in this, how early did you realize that she was about cheating? She was yeah. Oh, uh, like instantaneously. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Because as soon yeah. as she, like when they were sitting down at the table and she was talking about how good uh, uh, Benny's brain was, Seth Rogen's character, yeah. I was like. Okay, that's kind of weird. Well, it's obvious because she's all googly eyes over him at the table. Ha ha ha, Benny. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, but you know, yeah. there's that scene early on with the tornado where she drives the kids like dangerously into the tornado, <laughs> and it's Don't like, do that. yeah, you really get the impression that she is a she's trapped in this sort of like humdrum, uh, kind of life, almost like Walter White, you know, in Breaking Bad, like he pushes True, the bounds yeah. because he's like just sick. That's not the life he wanted for himself. Mm -hmm. And while she loves her kids and loves her husband, like, this isn't the life she really wanted for herself. So she made sacrifices to have a family, uh, which is, I don't, it's not, um, and this is what I thought was really interesting. Because a lot of times with stories like this, and I mentioned a movie a couple of episodes ago, we talked about briefly Revolutionary Road that does sort of this thing where one person is like, wants more and the other person's like, kind of content. Um Normally, there's, like, tension there where the two people are at odds because of it. Yep. But that wasn't really present here because Paul Dano's character, Bert, he, he is, like, he's never arguing against her doing, like, he is, like, one of the most nurturing and caring husbands ever. Yeah. And she says it at one point, like, your father's the most loving person I've ever met. He kills me with kindness. When I treat him like shit, he buys me something nice. So I thought that was really interesting because while she still wants more and feels trapped in this lifestyle, it's not because of him. It's all yeah. her own thing. It's all her, yeah. So much so yeah. that by the end of the movie, when they do eventually get divorced, spoilers, he <laughs> is the one that makes the decision. He lets her go. He sees how unhappy she is. And he knows that she's in love with Benny, his best friend. And he lets her go. He wants her to be happy. So straight to the bitter end, like he did, like he... Well, and he kind of sees his shortcomings early on, too. Because when they're fighting and she has, she loses her mom, he, he's, he forces... Uh, uh, what's his name? Sammy. Sammy. To make... Sammy to make the uh, camping film for. He's like, yeah, All right. I, I've done everything I can do. This will make her feel better. Please do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's a great guy. Um, yeah, and 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 they're both great parents. I mean, again, he ha again he had his shortcomings where he's like, oh, this is just a hobby, blah 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 blah. But again, he comes around in the end. If you don't want to go to school, don't go to school. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and I'll be I'll be there for you. And um, you know, and then back to the whole like art thing. Uh, that. The, the the real turning point in the movie, I think. Oh, I, I wouldn't. I'm a turning point's the wrong thing because Sammy was always on the path of filmmaking. It was always his yeah. thing. Yes. But he gets a good talking to from Uncle Boris, and That's Uncle right. Boris was an artist himself. He was a lion tamer in the circus, and <laughs> yeah. he kind of tells him like, "Listen, us artists, we're a different breed of people, and we will never uh, have a we we will never be able to align with non artists." Right. Because we just think too differently, basically, was the gist of the conversation. Uh, artists are passionate and dreamy and do want all this crazy stuff, and other people just aren't like that. So being an artist is painful because it alienates you from the people that don't really understand your passion. And that's like the term starving artist is where it comes from. It's yeah. like most of the time to pursue something that you love, like an art form, usually doesn't pay off in terms of like wealth or anything like that. It's very rare that that happens, you know? Right. Well, I think yeah. it's like this um, film also. Go ahead, Marvin. No, you go ahead. I can say my point. I was going to say this film does a really good job of portraying both sides of that mm -hmm. because the, you know, the dad he he understands that as well, and he knows that his logical mind yeah. can't necessarily relate, and he tries to do the right things, but he also sees that he's not going to connect, and that's why he kind of knew. I think with the, you know the whole uh, Uncle Benny thing, like. He knew, but he kind of let it go because he knew, like, he wouldn't be able to meet all her needs and expectations. Yeah, he knew it was good. I, I got that impression, too, that he he straight up knew that shit was going on the whole time. 
but let it go on because he loved her so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And and go. What were you gonna say, Marvin? Before I get into the next thing, uh, you're talking about like artists. People can't understand art. They got different brains or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. was gonna say that's like pretty much what was happening in like uh, Banshees of in the and it was like the same mm. thing with yeah. with yep. with Comb. Like mm -hmm. he was he had that strive for greatness and yep. You know, if you're just on the outside looking, in, you really well, can't understand yeah. it. If you're not little, an artist, the difference is, uh, in Manchie's inner Sharon, it's an artist and a dullard. And so that's right. Yeah. In this, it's an artist and a genius. And, uh, and but very, very similar parallels. Absolutely. And in yeah. his own right, Bert was like, so uh, the, what this movie does too great is that both parties, as you said, Dusty, like they both make a mark on the world. Like, the artist certainly makes a mark on the world. Clearly, Steven Spielberg has made a mark on the world. But also, somebody like Paul Dano in real life, inventing all this crazy tech and stuff that would, we would come to later use today, like, that is making a mark on the world. So you don't have to be an For artist sure. to make an impact, and vice versa. Right. And that's mm -hmm. where I thought this movie did a great thing, because usually these two things are at odds with one another. And you come out of movies like this, like, oh, what a fucking bitch. She was cheating on him because she was unhappy, blah, 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 blah. Or yeah. what a fucking dick. He was fucking, you know, stifling his family and keeping it. But you don't really have that feeling in this movie because they were both just really nice people. Like, even though she right. cheated on him and right. stuff. Although there is some question as to whether or not she cheated. I, I think she even says at one point to her to Sammy, like, I didn't do anything Nothing with happened. him. Yeah. It was more of like an emotional connection that she had. Um, right. which some could say is cheating too. He, this film does a great job of like showing the gap, whether it's, you know, like they couldn't, they loved each other and yeah. they provided for each other, but they could never fucking really mm. like truly come together because well, one's a logical genius and one's uh, a, an artistic brilliant and, mind. And there was a point in the movie too. Some, uh, I think his sister says to him when they're going through the divorce, she says like, um, Imagine what it's like being mom and like having to try to live up to dad's genius. Like dad is a genius yep. and she has yep. to like live in the shadow of that kind of, mm. but, but again, the, those two things never really like, um, they never conflict with one another because you just understand where they're coming from. That's just an unfortunate thing in life is like, you could love somebody so much, yeah. but you just don't like, gel with they them. couldn't bridge that gap that's what yeah that's exactly yeah. they couldn't do it like and even they that, can try as hard as they want to to yeah. get along and love each other but they could never like it, it they couldn't do it well the, the well, gap was always there I, again love each other i struggle to describe it because love each other doesn't even really do sure. justice what we're trying to say like they do right. love each other deeply but it's yes. not that like sometimes there's like there's more to love than that you know what i mean yes just being in love with somebody or just loving somebody sometimes isn't enough to make you happy mm -hmm. and you know she reached her breaking point long ago it seemed like yeah there's love right. and fulfillment yeah like, if you're not being fulfilled there, exactly it's fulfillment it's it's, um, it's different so yeah. it's it's a little bit kind of the movie ends on a little bit of a sad note in that regard between the parents but kind of all i mean like is a it, good ending for Sammy. Well, I feel like it's also a good... I, there's that last scene where he sees the picture of her with Happy yeah. with Benny, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. That's true. But, yeah. but also, he's doing what he wanted to do. And that was that was yeah. one of the conflicts throughout the movie, is that he keeps moving the family as he gets um, different jobs and promotions right. and stuff like that. But he wants that. That's what he so that wants to do. That was part of do. the abrasiveness of their relationship yeah. is... He was on his own path. Yep. But, and while his path provided for everybody yeah. th in his family and everything they needed, right. it wasn't necessarily everything they needed, right. as we saw. And that's why there was tension and it eventually tore apart. But that's why I say yeah. it's kind of like a happy ish. I mean, yes, it's sad that he's no longer with his wife, but it's sort of happy because he's still doing the thing that he wanted to do. You know what yeah. I mean? And that, and both part, everybody in this movie gets to do what they wanted to do. All the main True. characters, anyway. So, yeah. yep. um, so I thought that was great. Um, yeah. One of the other conflicts you mentioned, Dusty, is the bully. When they move to California later in the film, uh, Sammy has some unfortunate run-ins with some anti-Semitic uh, jocks and bullies. Mm -hmm. And at one point, he is tasked with filming the senior cut day uh, field trip to the beach or whatever. Fake senior cut day. And 
um, the movie is played over the uh, prom night, and the bully is seeing the way he was filmed, and he gets really emotional. And at first, I was confused. I was like, "What's going on with this guy?" And then later, he confronts Sammy, and he's like, "Why the fuck did you film me like that?" And Sammy's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "He's like, you made me look like a fucking golden god." He's like, "I'm not yeah. that, and I can't ever be that." Yeah, I love that. I love the way the the beef ended between yeah. them. He basically but destroyed it, his fucking ego. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And the bully is like, bro, like I said, I could never be this cool. You've you've ruined. But at the my same way, he was <laughs> not really at, at at the end. No, he at the end of it, he was. Oh like, well, yes. The the kid wanted to fucking fight uh, Take yeah, he wanted to fight Bert. Uh, mm -hmm. not, not Bert. So he wanted to fight Sammy. Yes. And he was he he, he protected him like he was yeah. the guy in that <laughs> film like. That bully was played was by uh, Sam Reckner, by the way. His name's Logan in the right. movie. And um, that's why I say in the beginning of this, um, you know, he's revealing who people truly are through his mm -hmm. lens because, yep. mm -hmm. you know, bullies nine times out of ten, they're compensating for something, right? It's, yep. They're compensating for their own insecurities. And clearly this kid is insecure and it comes out when he's filmed. He's seeing who he portrays himself as and then has this realization of like, Oh, I'm not that at all. Like, what am I doing yeah. with my fucking life? And on the <laughs> and and the other bully, uh, Chad, played by Oaks Fegley, he had a whole different realization. Is like, oh fuck, like nobody fucking likes me. Like, I'm a piece of shit. Even my best friend doesn't really like me. So he has yeah. a whole different reaction. So I thought yeah. that shit was cool too. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, by the end of the movie, well, he was being a piece of shit in the film. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know. By the end of the movie, Sammy's hard work and, and passion for filmmaking pays off because he goes to uh, a meeting with the CBS executive uh, mm -hmm. for a potential job on Hogan's Heroes that he's not very interested in taking because it's some sort of like low level fucking grunt job. Uh, but, but instead, he gets introduced to one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, John Ford. And John Ford is played by uh, my boy David Lynch in this movie. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. He, he plays such a great part. Um, and he gives him just like this little pep talk about the paintings. He's like, Hey, go look at that painting. Where's the horizon? And he's like, it's, it's, it's at the bottom. He said, tell me what you see. And he's like, Oh, you know, yeah, this yeah. guy on a horse looking at something. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no. Go look at that painting. Where's the horizon on that one at the top? Yeah. All right. Come over here. When the horizon's on the top, it's interesting. When it's on the bottom, it's interesting. When it's in the middle, I forget his exact word. It fucking sucks or whatever. He says. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Now get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> I thought that was pretty great. Um, yeah, that was great. And that was a nice way to wrap up the movie because, like, wow, if you're a filmmaker, John Ford is, like, like he's one of the greatest of all time. Uh, and, you know, you get to meet him in person and he gives you those kind words of wisdom while he's sucking on a cigar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, uh, I thought the cast was fantastic in this movie. Um, uh, I've seen some not-so-favorable reviews on imdb sometimes i like to read the like bad reviews yeah and there's some like one stars that are like this movie was fucking boring and it was like yeah, self-indulgent and all this stuff and i'm like what are you yeah. guys talking about like what it's we didn't watch the it's same not, movie apparently it's yeah. not steven's best but it's not a bad film i don't think so i mean i think this is a great movie um i think it's great and i, uh, I was really is this gonna be as timely as jaws oh, come on dude Okay, that's well, why I said it's well, not well, his I, best. But I can't say that. But it's that. still a no, good no, no. movie. I'm not saying it is or isn't. I can't say that. Oh. I, I probably not, but like I can't <laughs> say it will will be. But what were you yeah, gonna say, not. Marvin? Um I kind of forgot what I was saying, but uh I think the movie the movie was we kind of talked about it a little bit, but it was a bit uncomfortable to watch. Like we were basically solely mm -hmm. watching this family go to shit while Sammy yeah. gets better at his craft. But I like how you put it, Dan. They weren't really going to shit, it was just yeah, they, they were, were just, just dealing with becoming dealing with life. Well, that's the thing. I, I really like how it showed Sam, Sammy dealing with like the personal things while also like accomplishing things within his craft. It feels very relatable since we all have yeah, I mean, every moments absolutely. where we have something good happening to us personally, but we're also dealing with family drama. Drama. Yeah, everybody's family is dysfunctional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and everybody deals with this sort of stuff. Maybe not everybody has gone through a divorce or or has grown up with a divorced couple, but. Uh, I have personally, uh, but mm, me too, you know, I didn't find it really uncomfortable at all. Um, but some of these one star reviews that we were talking about are like, oh, you know, this is just boring and nothing's happening. It's like, well, it's a, it's a fucking coming of age drama. Like, what do you want to happen? 
Like, do you yeah, want ET I mean, to show up? Like, I don't understand. Do there want- were times when it felt a little bit slow. Um, I found myself more intrigued yeah. with, uh, geez, I'm terrible with name. Sammy, Sammy's process, like, uh, his process with getting better at film because like the whole yeah. family drama, like I, I've, I've lived that and experienced that. So some of that was slow <laughs> for me because I'm like, okay, I see what's coming. I see what's coming. So when he was doing stuff like poking holes in the film and, and doing other like techniques and learning, learning his, his craft. art like that stuff his craft that stuff was fascinating to me and i thought it was wonderful yeah. mm-hmm. that, to see him grow into what he became as showing that final full film that everybody loved at the end so yeah right. you know yeah i um i think every character had their own sort of um journey in this movie with the exception yeah. of the two sisters they kind of didn't really have too much to do other than just like be no. be like yeah. annoying to him but, Props for Sammy. No, his his stars. They were his stars. Like, yeah, that's a true. A lot of his movies, well, they were but they, <laughs> like that whole the screaming up the stairs and the mom freaking out. Like that was like yeah. that's fucking hilarious. Like, but yeah, they didn't they that. didn't have character arcs, is what I really mean. No, they didn't. You're um right. but but all yeah. the main the main characters, the main cast, they each had like a pretty significant character arc. Uh also with the exception of Seth Rogan, he didn't have much of an arc per se. Um, other than his devotion to the family. And, you know, I mean, some might say he's a home wrecker, but like, you know, mm. he I, tried to redeem himself through money, which felt it wasn't through. Of, I don't think it was. I, I don't it felt a little dirty to me. Like, I actually I, didn't here, get that I, at I bought all. you this camera that, that I don't know. I, that, I, that didn't, felt dirty get, to me. I didn't get that at all because okay. he was always supportive of the family. Like he loved the Absolutely, family. Absolutely. Yeah. He loved yeah. the family. He loved Sammy. And I think that was a legitimate act of kindness of like trying to nurture his passion and his craft. It could be both. I think yes, it could be, but I that, didn't. It it definitely was both. I just didn't Marvin get the. I just didn't get the impression that he was trying to like pay Sammy off in any way. Well, again, it was both. Like he he felt bad because of what he was doing, and he was trying to like warm back up to him. Yeah. But he also had genuine intent, and like I know your passion and your hobby, mm-hmm. and I know you'll love this, and this is good for you. So yeah. like you, you again, it can be both, and that's what it was. That's yeah. what it felt like. Um and. You know, let's talk about every, all the actors. For you know, the cast was fucking amazing. Um, I love the cast, yeah. The kid who played Sammy, Gab- Gabriel Labelle, he was very good. Um, Paul Dano was amazing. Paul Dano is always amazing and everything. He's always good, yeah. Yeah. Um, Seth Rogen was great, and I was surprised to see Seth Rogen in a movie like this. He obviously yeah. doesn't typically do dramas, right? But, and 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 he's generally always Seth Rogen. This is one of the first times I think I've seen him like be less no, Seth rogan That is true. Yeah. Like he was for sure being Seth Rogen, but it was like less than he does in his comedies. He um, did this movie and then it, that's when he had that spark to make that uh, tweet about Marvel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit, I was in a fucking artsy Steven Spielberg movie? Fucking <laughs> fuck Marvel. Fuck uh, Marvel. But I think the standout of the movie is uh, Michelle Williams. I thought she was fucking amazing. Um, yeah. She's always a great actress in most of the stuff she does, but I think she killed it in this movie. Some of the negative reviews I saw said she overacted, but I think that was the point of the character, is that yeah. she was an actor in the in the movie. She was an actor. She was a musician. She was a she, dancer. She didn't overact. No, she didn't overact. Um, no, if you if you meet artsy people, they yep. are very are like dramatic like in that. real yes. life. So it's like that's how it, they it makes are. sense. But she was also portraying the way. Pe- actors of the time acted in movies where they're yep. like, it's always that over oh my god where's Lassie <laughs> Paul Paul Lassie's missing and yeah. it's always that like over overacted over dramatic like type of acting and that's how she yeah. actually talked like the clipping right. of the fingernails when she's doing her piano or something yeah like, or she like that was the... not weird or out of the ordinary no. like, that's that's how it would have played mm-hmm. out by somebody like that in that time or she yeah. stood on the chair of like the table mm-hmm. to be like i'm going to therapy like she yeah. i don't think she overacted <laughs> at all i think michelle williams was fantastic nailed she, it she killed yeah. it um makes me kind of wanna uh, rework my my best picture maybe my best picture uh not best picture my best actress uh thing oh, well, we still know. have time we're not like I, I i like this movie overall but i don't see how it's up against movies like Banshees or Everything Everywhere. I don't see it at all. Well, because of Steven Spielberg. 
Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm just saying, yeah. from, from my, my opinion, it shouldn't be in the same Well, class listen, as those two I could see Michelle Williams, I mean, in terms of just, I mean, not, in terms of just winning, I could see her giving Michelle Yeoh a run for her money. Uh, I, I think they're both great. Pointed. I could see this competing against Banshees, um, but I don't see it. everything everywhere all at once for me this year was yeah that movie's just out of out of this world step good. above so. literally out of this world good <laughs> so uh, yeah no I mean yeah I but she was for sure the standout for me and you feel for yeah. her you feel for everybody in the movie but really what 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 movies capped off by a great thing it's like you realize by the end of the movie Sammy has the best of both his parents which is the ideal True. situation when you're raising children so yeah. like he has the work ethic of his father. The logical thinking of his father, but he also has the whimsical and like the creativity, cre the creativity yeah. and sort of spirit of his mom. And uh, he's like a giga human. And that was cool to see because, you know, despite their own problems with each other and themselves, like they never sacrificed raising their children properly. Yeah. Like the children were always priority number one, even so much so that that she has the conversation when they're moving to California. Like, I'm never going to leave this family. I'm just going to suck it up and I'm going to raise you and your brother, uh, you and your sisters, and I'm going to be there for everybody. Obviously, it got to a point where she just like couldn't take it anymore so much that she got yeah. a fucking monkey and named it Benny. <laughs> She's like, I need Benny and Benny needs me. He's my friend. That's why, like, they never, you know what, they never, that's why I said I don't think she actually cheated on her husband. Like, we could argue the semantics of, like, what cheating actually is, whether emotional cheating is a thing or not, but... It's different for everybody. I don't actually think... Holding hands with another person is cheating for some people. I don't think that she ever had a sexual relationship with Benny. I think it was purely emotional and um, sort of on the same wavelength. Like, her husband was so focused and... Yeah. Like smart that she couldn't like really relate to him. You know what I mean? It's hard to connect with that yeah. sort of logical genius. It right. really I know. Is. I'm a logical genius. People have a hard time connecting with me all the time. <laughs> so I get it. And vice versa. He had a hard time connecting with her because I mean he tried so, yeah. and he tried with kindness, you know, that sometimes that's not enough. But Benny right. was like right in her wheelhouse. He was funny and smart and like all the all the things. So yeah, the movie just makes you feel for every character. It doesn't really make you hate one or the other, which generally for is sure. the case in stories like this. At least for me, I always come out like siding with one of the two, and I didn't feel that way in this movie. Yeah. Um. So I you really, can relate to both sides. Yeah, absolutely. If you're really mm -hmm. being honest with yourself as a human. Yeah, a yeah. hundred percent. And uh, yeah, no, I love this movie. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I don't understand what all the fucking like bad reviews or like i mean it's imdb user reviews if you if you have the energy to make a fucking imdb I, an imdb account to leave a rating like like something you're just something's going on in your life like listen to this one i'm just gonna read this one the fablemans is not good director and co-writer steven spielberg's heart was in the right place the idea the conceit the structure is fine but the execution fails to deliver the film is too long by far scenes run on forever the story seems flabby and unfocused you get the gist but i don't agree with any of that um speaking of time does make a good point the movie was very long didn't feel that it long to me long. it felt a little long to me did it yeah <clears throat> There okay. were times where some of the scenes felt like they could have ended a little bit sooner, but overall, that's fair. It got this; they got the message across, so it didn't feel like God. I wish this was over. It's just like, right. all right, let's get through the scene because I'm interested in what's going to happen next. Yeah. Don't yeah. watch Boyhood, then Marvin. Boyhood's like five hours. <laughs> Ooh, well, that one. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they spent twelve years making it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things I really liked about this movie, one of my favorite things, and it's such the, it's such a little detail, but I loved it every time they did it. I think they only showed it twice, but they ate on paper plates and like a throwaway tablecloth. And yeah. at the mm -hmm. end of the dinner, they just fucking piled everything into the center, wrapped it Amazing. up in a tablecloth and threw it out. I Amazing. am not a fan of doing dishes. I'd rather throw the shit in my backyard than clean them. So this is a brilliant <laughs> idea. I got to take that. Yeah, that's a good one. I got to put that in my that's arsenal. Old school. That's old school shit right there. But yeah, uh, yeah this is getting uh, critical... Uh, critical praise. Do you guys have any last words to say about it before we give our ratings? Nah, I think we covered everything. Yeah, it's a simple movie, simple story. Uh, just, it really is. I thought it was done really well. And you know what? Like, it's 
when I first was watching it, last thing I'll say is Steven Spielberg's movies have a very specific charm to them. Like mm -hmm. most often, most often than not, you know, when you're watching a Steven Spielberg movie. And at first I didn't really get that out of this, but as it went on, I was like, oh yeah, this is a very Steven Spielberg movie. <laughs> um, and of course the John Williams score like that just kind of wraps it up as well. But uh, yeah, that's true. This movie's getting good praise, obviously seven Oscar nominations, and uh, I think it has 25 wins so far in other shows, and 261 nominations in total. That might be the Spielberg yeah. bias, but uh, it, it is a very good 100%. movie. I think, I think it, it is. is. Uh, it is. It has a IMDb rating of 7.6. I'm going to give this movie a 7.5. I'm right there with it. Yeah, I'm right there with the 7.5. Let's honest. go. We three-peat? Uh, three-peat? Spielberg... Peat? Nope, it's the Spielberg bias. I have to knock it down to a seven only because I don't know if this one will stand the time and be a Spielberg top 10. Oh, so if it's not a Spielberg true. top 10, I don't, I can't give it a 7.5 or an eight because you know me, I don't rate movies very high. There's some that yeah. I do That's true. because of the rewatchability, but Listen. it's like Schindler, Schindler's List, Jaws, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones. Like, there's a lot of movies out there that are rewatchable. And this one, I loved. I loved it, but I don't think I'll watch it. If I watch it again, no, it'll be once or twice. It won't be 10, 15, 20 times. I, I can't think, see myself doing that. I think you're being a little unfair because maybe his maybe. those movies you just rat, you just rattled off. Are some of the most are some of the greatest movies ever made? Like exactly, you, yeah. Okay, I can but watch I'm, those movies. Like I could watch one of the, I could watch those movies every year, like once fair. a year. You didn't and mention, be okay with it. The, I don't think. Well, I mean, I could go down the list. He's got a lot of them. I know, but I don't think I could rewatch this every year and enjoy it as much. Like I, I'll watch it. I'll rewatch it a couple times. But this isn't a ten twenty. I've seen that movie fifty yeah. times and I love it type movie for me. I don't so I got to drop it. I got it for okay. now. Yeah, I got you. 7. I don't seven. think he's made a bad movie other than Indiana Jones and Kingdom a of the Crystal seven Skull. 7 is a great yeah. 7 is a great rating. Crystal Skull's like out uh, of 10? Just, uh, come on. Crystal Skull's arguably is probably his only bad movie. And uh just a little fun fact uh before we wrap up here, the two films that he made in the movie, Escape to Nowhere and The Last Gun, are actual early films he made uh in 1959 and 1961, respectively. Huh. Wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. Uh Steven Spielberg remains to be a destroyer. Uh yeah. and yeah, that's that. We'll see if it takes home any awards this season. Yes, sir. We'll see. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. There's our thoughts on the Fablemans. Um, we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you're listening on a particular podcast platform, please leave consider leaving a rating. That helps us out tremendously. And if you're watching over on YouTube, you can leave a like on the video, leave a comment, let us know about what you think about some of the news we covered, Fablemans, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll catch you in the next the next episode next week. See you. Hasta. <laughs>